Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie, and this is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Off Script, the podcast where we compare books and movies. I'm Bree. I'm Allie. Why do I always feel like just saying the podcast that compares book to movies is missing something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's pretty self explanatory. It is, but every time you say it, I'm like, I have to add more. I have to add more. And then I never know what I'm adding. Oh, I think it's fine. Uh, guys, guess what? What? We are recording at Bookum. Yes, a bookstore in Port Orchard. Yes, we already have released a mini-sode where we're here yes but if you don't listen to our mini-sodes this is news to you yes and yes. also what's wrong with you go listen to our mini-sodes they're actually kind of fun actually that one was just me going on about being a fangirl so maybe not maybe that's not your cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> let's downplay our episodes to our listeners <laughs> i'm gonna be real honest <laughs> because i feel like every time i go on and on about and then, like, every time I'm looking at things or, like, memories pop up on my Facebook and I'm like, oh, yeah, look at this. I'm like, oh, that would be good for this book and that would be good for this book. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just keep talking about going to write carpets. My life is not that glamorous. And let's be honest, my life wasn't that glamorous when I was doing that. It's more glamorous than mine. <laughs> Changing diapers and <laughs> <laughs> wiping noses. Anyways. Not me meeting people and them not knowing me <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> sounds pretty spectacular <gasps> oh. oh is it spectacular now it's pretty much <gasps> did you live in the spectacular now while you were doing it probably not <laughs> okay well i suck at, i suck at living in the spectacular now. <laughs> well i tried uh, good job but you guys so yeah we're here this is our first um this is our picture painting for you yeah uh our first on location because we don't really count Miller Tree. Miller Tree. They didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we did that secretly. They were very excited when we told them. But yeah. this one yeah. we reached out and got permission well, and my everything. Dad always told me it's easier to ask for forgiveness than or it's better to ask for forgiveness. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be like, Wow. I <laughs> It's not, it's damn you. <laughs> I know what you're trying to say too, and I, I just can't remember it either. I can't remember the last part of that. Yes, yes, yes. Then to not ask at all? No. <laughs> no. It would be way easier not to ask at all. <laughs> you're thinking of the, the answer's always no if you never ask. Yeah. You guys, don't come to us for <laughs> for quoting advice or anything. Go for forgiveness, guys, rather than the other thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what we did with Miller Tree. But this is the first one where, like, I've been sending out some emails to see if we can go record on location places. And they said yes. And I was really excited that they said yes. And I this know. is actually, like, it's so cute here. It is. It's, like, almost like a little house. Like, you walk down hallways and... Mm -hmm. um, there's books everywhere. Mm -hmm. For a bookworm, this is heaven. Yeah, she's like, there's a different genre in each and room. it smells so good. It does. It smells yeah. like books. It does. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. And then once we're done shopping, or once we're done shopping, <laughs> once we're done recording, we're going to shop a little bit. Yep. But of course, we're like awkward mm. as In can our be. prime. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book right next to us, guys. <laughs> we're freaking as awkward as can be. And people walk by us and we're like, forget how to podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. As we're doing this to try and get more people to listen. <laughs> yes. We're like advertising. And then we're we like, we get quiet when they walk by. Stare what right at the, you. What are we doing? <laughs> we're the freaking worst. Oh, well. It's my our favorite, first time. My favorite is when we were talking to the Miller Tree and he was like, so tell us more about like your podcast. <laughs> we're like, Here you go. And we explained it to him. We did not tell him our name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then like he had people checking out and I hear him talking to them and being like, oh, yeah, they're here for a podcast. He can't tell them that our name. <laughs> He doesn't and he doesn't want to be awkward like they didn't tell us <laughs> oh my gosh that was so bad luckily we've tagged them in things so they know us now yes hopefully 
and they share our stuff so yeah they're so sweet we love them mm-hmm. i want to go back i know i really just want those avocado eggs again <laughs> oh my god they legit just heard you talk about that four days ago wait right when yes Wednesday. no a week ago no you talked oh, about it in the, in the bonus oh yeah the four days ago <laughs> right Thursday, i'm telling you it was really good and i wanted to do it i wanted to make them yesterday but when i went to the store i forgot to buy what i needed for it <laughs> that <laughs> was so sad that makes it not possible possible yeah mm-hmm. but anyways guys yeah let's do this or right, unless you have more picture painting no i think that's it we're at a really cool bookstore guys yeah. and i'm really excited to be here me too it was very nice of them to say yes yes so thank you bookum yes um okay let's do this that so today we are doing spectacular now it was actually really good oh i guess we also should say we're kind of like talking quietly right now because oh yeah we're in bookum and we don't want to disturb anyone yep so we're being quiet yes it's mice that was my little mouse <laughs> Okay, so now we're doing the spectacular now. Yes, okay. So, let me give you your synopsis. Sutter, a popular party animal, expectedly meet... Oh, gosh. <laughs> unexpectedly, goodness, meets the introverted Amy after waking up on a stranger's lawn. Sutter decides that Amy is in need of an internal makeover to help her be more confident, and an unexpected romance blossoms between them. Yeah. I have to ask you, okay, so what was the um, synopsis on the DVD? Because that was kind of, I added the internal makeover. Yeah. Because it was just Sutter and Amy. It said something. And a romance bot. It wasn't anything that you, like. Well, what's hilarious is like, let me see if I can find it. Because, okay, so I hadn't watched the movie since I watched it. Actually, when I bought the DVD. So forever ago, basically. So I knew the key points. I knew the differences. But there were things that I was like, I can't totally remember this. Can't totally remember this. That's not it yeah, either. Yeah, that's, that's the one I copied. So when you said don't read it, I was like, oh, I already read it. But it wasn't. No, I'm trying to find the one literally on the DVD case. We'll type in DVD case. Oh, that's in a different language. Well, that's just rude google <laughs> basically what it says is like sutter's life gets turned upside down when his girlfriend breaks up with him and he loses his job <laughs> yeah and i was like okay i don't remember that difference but that is definitely something that she shouldn't read <laughs> right but then you watch it and it's not really a difference at all no. and that's not even what it's really about <laughs> exactly i was like okay this dvd cover has it all wrong <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so the author is tim tharp mm-hmm. director james pon so <laughs> sold pon sold let me see it no the t would be silent wouldn't it because it'd be pon sold pon sold yep okay so i said it right very slowly <laughs> <laughs> screenplay writer scott noose <laughs> can i see free doesn't have the notes in front of her you read them all scott <laughs> newstatter and michael h weber okay and then we also realized because i want to compliment this guy so freaking much that since i listened to the audiobook i should give them credit too and so this audiobook was read by mac oh i guess audiobooks can be read by a lot of people though well the one that you read the one i did yeah okay because then people can go and find the one that you listen to okay. if they want. True. Okay. So or if you hated how they read it, then they can go find a different one. Okay, that's true. So the one that I listened to was narrated by Mac Leod. Leod. Leod? <laughs> Mac Leod. Mac Leod. I don't know. <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> good job, Mr. Andrews. Good job. Dude, he was so good. So, you know, when you read, well, maybe you don't. <laughs> when you listen to books, um, they do that in, what's the word? Where they laugh and, like, the the, the voices. Inner monologue? 
no, 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 no. And with the quotations. So say, say the line before was, and Sutter laughed, and then it said, it has the quotes. Okay. So then n- normal audiobook readers would then... Like the description. The descriptors. Maybe. So the normal audiobook readers would then laugh in the quotes part, right? Oh, okay. But he was like, it felt like he was telling the story the whole time. He would be like cracking up at things that like, as if you were telling the story and you personally found it funny. Aww. Yeah, so he was like, Sutter. He was Sutter, and it was just so fun. I did not at any point feel like I was being read a story. Wow. I fought. I fought. I thought. I fought him. <laughs> I thought it really felt like he was sitting there telling me a story. It reminded me of a time when I had to take public speaking in school for being a teacher, and we're sitting there and watching this teacher, and he's telling us a whole story, and then he ends with, "And there, I just gave you a speech." And we're like, what? (laughs) He's like, it's that easy. You're literally up here telling a story and that is your speech. And because it was like a personal narrative speech we had to give. And so that's all I thought was like, it just felt like I was was like, I felt like I was sitting there like listening to someone tell a personal story. It was really good. So I had to give him a huge shout out because Mm -hmm. it was, I had so much fun listening to it. Well, this book is written exactly like that. Like, yeah, I want, I have not read any of his other books, Tim Uh Tharp's, but. After this read through, I was like, this is such a fun way to read a book yeah. because it really, and it's not like a diary book. So it doesn't feel like Sutter is going in like, dear diary, <laughs> like, right? anything like that. He's just like, you know, this is what happens. <laughs> like, and he's telling you and the kind of like what you said with the, like, there's never a Sutter laughed because right. it's all first person. Yeah. So it's always like, and then I'm like... <laughs> And yeah. it goes into like what he said. Yeah. I love it. It's so, one of my favorites. Yeah. So like at the very beginning, we'll get into the comparisons, of course. But mm-hmm. at the beginning when he picks up the little kid, right? At in the story. And he Oh yeah. Little, okay. Yeah. And he's like he starts cracking up because the kid says he's moving he's f- driving to Florida and he's like oh yeah oh my gosh that was the best thing I'd ever heard. <laughs> and it's like he's laughing and it was just like uh, that's just so fun to listen to. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I also think that the movie does a really good job of like portraying this too. Yeah, I think so too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love. Yeah, they did yeah. a good job. This is one of my favorites. I absolutely I forgot how much I loved it. Yeah, until we did this again. Yeah, it also helped that Mr. Andrews had a country accent, and oh. I <laughs> love country accents. What's your favorite um, accent? You really have to ask. No, I'm asking for them. <laughs> British <laughs> who would have guessed <laughs> everyone who's heard me ramble on and on, and on about Rob <laughs> no British is actually surprisingly far down on my list what not too far but it's like not my top three I know dang that's my number one I like Australian which I mean is kind of close to British but mm-hmm. it's not and then I really like Scottish and then it's country and then it's British for me mm. I only know British. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, a little tangent. Let's keep going with all this info. Mm-hmm. So the book came out October 20th, 2008, and the movie September 13th, 2013. Oh, That's wow. a five-year difference. Wow. Yeah. So, which first, book or movie? I almost lied. <laughs> well, don't do that. I was like, book. <laughs> Nope. Movie. <laughs> you saw the movie first? Yeah. Oh, okay. You didn't know that? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. I saw the movie first. Oh, is that why you had me read it first? Yes. So, guys, we're really going to crack down now. And yeah. yeah. Do the opposite of whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, we're going to do the opposites. And if, like, for example, next week, I we're doing Perks mm-hmm. and I watched it first, but, like, 10 years ago. <laughs> so, I made sure to watch it. On time, like right now, mm-hmm. so that because <laughs> Allie doesn't have the best memory. Me, oh, my memory sucks. Me, I remember well enough that I don't feel like I have to do that. Yeah, no. But anyways, so but yes, we're gonna we're give gonna you more honest. Yes. Yeah, I really wanted to see. I'm excited to see what you choose. Okay. Yeah. I mean, now I'm interested to see what you choose. I know. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, intrigue. Yes. <laughs> All right, you guys. What are uh, so? What's your initial thoughts? 
of the story. <laughs> it's so hard because like, <laughs> what are your initial thoughts? Let's hear yours <laughs> first. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. I mean, it's not like going to be one of my top stories. Yeah. It's not like a story. We didn't say this in the synopsis, but basically Sutter is a teenage alcoholic. And mm-hmm. so that's I not. Know. They they very kindly call him a party animal. When yes. really he's He is a full on alcoholic. Yeah. And so it's not like, I don't know. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed how real it was. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll mention this as we go through, but like. Sutter will meet characters that you think will be like important Mm -hmm. and they never get brought up again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it just felt like real life. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool to read. The plot and story overall was sad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, I don't know. It was good. I I don't know if I would, like, it's not going to be a reread, reread, reread for me, but I enjoyed how it was written and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, so how I found this because I went to the early screening of it because mm-hmm. this came so out. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> this came out when I was in L.A. Mm-hmm. I think it was for my internship. Twenty wait, it came out in twenty eighteen. Twenty thirteen. You said thirteen. Why? Because two thousand eight. Yeah. So it had to come out. Wait, what month did it come out? September. September 13th, 2013. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how the hell did I see it? I realized I was in LA for summer for my internship. And it was an early screening, mm-hmm. like way early, like not even red carpet premiere early. And I think it was just kind of, I think they were getting a feel for, I think they had a lot of press come and it was the like, how is this movie going to get? taken is Mm -hmm. it gonna be something that we should be releasing or whatever so i went to it i think i can't remember who told me about it but i think someone was like hey brie do you want to go to this with me and i was like absolutely Mm -hmm. (laughs) why not yeah and at this point in time because i had been studying film for so long i i was getting sick of the like i've talked about on here i was getting sick of the hero stories i was getting sick of the like Everything always works out for people. That's not real life. And if you go and see the movies that are like the big blockbusters, everything always works out for them. Mm -hmm. And I was getting sick of it. I was like, why can't Hollywood give me movies that are real? That are. Guess what? Life sucks. Mm -hmm. Here's the hand you're dealt. You have to deal with it. Yeah. Figure your shit out. And... I feel like this was one of the first movies that I saw that was like that. And I was like, this it's the production company is a 24 and I love a 24. And I think this was one of my first like introductions to it. Mm -hmm. Every movie that they put out. Sure. Some of them are a little bit more like, like the Rover is a 24 and the Rover is like post apocalyptic world. Uh But at the end, it's a very real story where like, some of the characters that you want to win, they end up dying. <laughs> like things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. So I loved that. I was like, wow, they're actually showing me a story that's real life. Mm-hmm. And this is what I want to see more of. This is the film that I want to make. And so I just, I love that aspect of it. And I love the book, the book's worse than the movie mm-hmm. because it's very real and honest about everything. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the movie kind of shies away from him being an alcoholic. Like, it shows him being an alcoholic. But it's not... Nearly as bad. uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. you just see him carrying around his cup, but not... Oh, it's got my 7-Up and my whiskey. Oh, got to pour my whiskey in. Oh, whiskey. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. I think I just... It was a breath of fresh air for me because it was finally real life. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really liked it. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. It's one that I reread. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. And why did you pick it? We. Why did we pick it? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Allie, why did we pick it? Because <laughs> uh, I knew I was going to be sad about Twilight being done. <laughs> so I had to do books that I was like, 
that I knew that I loved. So you picked a sad book? Well, I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I I watched the movie first, and the movie sticks with me more than the book. Oh, okay. So, like, I forgot he was an alcoholic. I forgot. Oh, got it. <laughs> That's so like fair. a few chapters in, I was like, "Huh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah, man, that's, that's why. Funny. Plus, I love I love Miles Teller. I know I really liked him too. He, yeah, and I think it's a testament to him because I love him. And when I saw Top Gun, I thought he was a dick. And then, like for a hot minute, I was like, "I don't like you." Wow. <laughs> but I've met him twice, and he's. He is the sweetest person I've ever met. So, Aww. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I thought he was a dick after Top in Top Gun. I mean, because he he's he's kind of a dick. He ends up being nice, but like yeah. how he is for most of that movie. I mean, he's pissed off his dad's dead because of it. this guy I'm, who's now his teacher. I get it, <laughs> but like, I was like, dude, ease up. He's sad because his best friend's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Grief does funny things to you. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh wait, are you ready for Allie's super fun facts? Yeah. Allie's super fun facts. <laughs> All right. Okay, this one. I always find this super interesting when they tell me mm-hmm. how long movies took to <laughs> film. Mm-hmm. This one only took 25 days to film. Damn, that's so quick. I know. I don't know when they say this, if they mean start to finish and include weekends or yeah, if it's only, likely, no. only every day that they work. Oh. You know, like 25 filming days. No, so it's 25 filming days. Okay. Number two. At one point during production, pre-production, the script began to change. Oh, gosh. How do you say that? What's her name? Chanel? Sh- Shailene. Shailene. Oh, yeah. Shailene. Making some ends go somewhere else, you guys. <laughs> I'm also reading off my phone. Oh, yeah. Blame the phone. So it's really ten small. Ten times smaller than normal. Because Allie's so blind. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, so she was worried that the new rewrites would make the story less honest. And at one point, she even called Miles Teller to tell him that she was thinking of dropping out. Oh. Teller managed to convince her to stay on, and the rewrites never happened. Oh, oh I love Miles. I know. I also, because they, uh, he's in Divergent. Mm-hmm. And... They like they have such a good relationship. She has a good yeah. relationship with Miles and uh, Ansel, uh-huh. and it just it makes me so happy. I'm like, oh, I love you guys. No, that's one of my facts actually. And oh, coming up here, not what you said, but how good of a relationship they have. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay, this includes both Miles and oh gosh, Shailene. Mm-hmm. Okay, their first ever sex scene. And Miles had to do it twice. <laughs> yeah, for Miles. <laughs> and he had to do one way out. <laughs> and one... I really like theirs. Theirs is really sweet. It is. And it was full... Okay, I didn't write these ones down, but I remember them. That was full, no cuts in between. They did that for like two and a half minutes. Just went wow. for it. Wow. Uh-huh. And, and it was our first... It was our first damn. one. And then the one with Brie Larson. Yeah. She has never... She always said no to nude scenes. But she wanted to get out of her comfort zone a little bit. So she said yes if it's very quick and like tactfully done. And she also did it to help Shailene feel more confident about hers because she has to get topless too. I know. What's funny is it's all tastefully done. You can't see anything. But I forgot that Brie was in this and I've always had an issue with Brie. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with her. Never knew why. And I think it's because she plays Cassidy. (gasps) so interesting because i don't like cassidy what yeah oh we're gonna have some interesting talks coming up here (laughs) number four even though i gave you like three in that one (laughs) that's fine many of the dialogues between miles and shailene are improvised what's funny is i kind of thought that this watch through i was like it seemed like they gave them like okay this has to get said Uh but like in their first few scenes where shailene just seems awkward and like she doesn't know what to say and she's like yeah yeah Okay, yeah. It's because it was real life. I know. That's, like even that's how you would talk in mm-hmm. real life. Mm-hmm. I loved she it. She did so good, too, being the girl who's like, oh, I'm into him, but he's kind of into me, but not. Oh, yeah. It was so cute. It was very cute. All right. So the last one. 
years later when Miles starred in Top Gun, uh, his spectacular now co-host Shailene. Co-host? (laughs) Co-star. Congratulated him on the film's success and even attended the screening. I know. I just thought that was cute. Uh, That they're all friends. I love Mm -hmm. when actors stay friends. Mm -hmm. They have a really good relationship. I love Miles. He's just so sweet. He's very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, You guys. (laughs) I don't know why my throat is not doing so hot. Please forgive me. (laughs) I feel fine. But my voice is like, no, you don't. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Okay. We also want to say that. So we didn't want to spend all day at Bookham. Yeah. And take up all their time. So we recorded the beginning and end of our podcast. And the comparisons were at home. Yeah. At Bree's place. Yeah. And I'm going to do my magic yeah and put it all together because we were already there for like two hours recording yeah so yeah didn't want to make it a whole three hours there exactly appreciate you guys for letting us uh record there we love it yeah it was fun it was we just i didn't want to take up yeah people's i know especially because people would walk in and kind of like get awkward and like walk out (laughs) yeah and i was like oh no browsing no they could still shop i'm sorry Mm -hmm. but um so it's later in the night and my voice hates nighttime apparently. So you know what it's telling you to go to bed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Someone is talking to me about how she's not giving herself much her time. I don't know. <laughs> nope. I need to do more me time and take care of myself. And sleep is like the bottom of my list and it needs to be the top. Uh, Your body's like, maybe if I do this to her. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my uh, gosh. Well, so <laughs> have, have fun listening to this, you guys. Because it's been annoying me for the last like five days. So uh, it doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> you say that and then you're gonna edit it and hear this morning's versus now, and you're gonna be like, holy crap, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Anyways. Okay. I'm not that mean. <coughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to leave that right in. (laughs) So the book kicks off. And Sutter and his girlfriend Cassidy are going to ditch school because they're going to meet up and just, you know, hang out like normal high schoolers. Yeah, all the popular kids did. I also like that about this book was that it was like the popular side of high school Mm -hmm. that I never experienced. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, that's what some of the kids did. This is sure isn't what I did. <laughs> so anyways. I like so, that you like it for that. <laughs> I just found it interesting. <laughs> I was like, this is why I did not do that. <laughs> All right. So, but before he goes to Cassidy's, he has to stop at the corner store and get his seven up mixer for his whiskey. He has Duh. <laughs> this 18 year old and um, he goes in, but he sees a six year old named Walter and he's asking for a dollar for a candy bar because he's running away from home. <laughs> and Sutter thinks he's hilarious. And so he gives him, he ends up talking to him about, like, you don't have protection. Like, come on. He's like, well, I got a baseball bat at home. He's like, well, you weren't prepared. Let's go get it. Like, he's being a good guy getting this kid home. Mm-hmm. And then we find out he's trying to run away to Florida. They're in Oklahoma right now, I believe, right? Yes. And um, doesn't remember where he lives, but there's this black van with no tires so they're like driving up and down the street and finally they found his house and um walter's mom is pissed because she can tell sutter's drunk driving her kid around smell it yeah but it like starts describing her as like this beautiful lady and it's like oh is she gonna be the love interest but that's what i loved about this book (laughs) is that it's like this is the only scene that these people are in because it's like real life yep it was so he just cool. Met him on a whim and went on about his yeah, day. It's just like you meet someone this one time and then you never see him again. It's yep. Like, it's exactly what happened. I was like, there are not a lot of books out there that just give you characters for no reason. No, there's not a lot. That doesn't happen in the movie at all. But but d- did you want it? And oh, <laughs> he, 
uh, Sutter called back and he's like, just so you know, your, your kid's really hurting. Like he's really sad missing his dad. And I guess that was the main reason for that. That was the whole reason because essentially that whole chapter was basically Sutter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sutter's the kid. Sutter's sad. He's missing his dad. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in the movie. In the movie, Sutter's writing to the dean of admissions to let him into a college. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't Which, happen in the book. No. <laughs> Sutter does not want to go to college in the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that also was weird, but basically everything else happens. It's very fast paced. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, this whole first chapter doesn't happen. Sorry, everything that you're about to talk about happens. Yes. I was like, <laughs> nothing just happened. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Sutter's now late to Cassidy's and he, he knows she's going to be pissed. And he's like, oh my gosh. So he climbs up onto her roof. This is not the first time he's done this. No. Yeah. He's very, according to her, like thinks of himself only all the time. But he's like, but I got a plan because I wasn't thinking about myself. I was taking care of Walter. Yeah, she'll have to be okay with this. Yes. So he goes in and like, she's not answering the door. Mm -hmm. And so he climbs up on a roof <laughs> and then his whiskey slips. So he goes to grab his whiskey, which makes him fall off the roof. And it's like, oh my gosh. And uh, Cassidy Good. comes out. She's pissed because the gutter fell off. Right. Uh -huh. And he's like, what about me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted her to then be like, but you're so drunk that I wouldn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so then he tells her all about Walter and she kind of sort of softens up a little bit. And then she ends up talking to him a lot about, about a lot of stuff, like her feelings and everything, but he's can't pay attention because man, <laughs> he is like wanting her. <laughs> She's just so beautiful. Yes. It was actually a very funny chapter. Cause he's like, you know, it's not our fault. He's like, it's not, I just can't pay attention. Like, it's just not fair <laughs> and then he's like but on the counter flip all i have to do and then he starts whispering sweet nothings to her like <laughs> which he loves her and all that and he's like and your then, eyes are a blue universe and i'm just falling into them yep and he's like and then that's their weakness that they can't think of anything else <laughs> and sure enough then they end up making love i wouldn't call this making love no not really oh and and after he's kind of like thinking about it and he's like <sighs> Well, no, because she asks him, can you do that? And he goes, uh-oh, can I? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. And then he just starts. He's like, of course, of course, baby, I can do anything. And then he's afterwards, she's just laying there, you know, snuggling him. And he's like, I don't, I really don't know what she was talking about. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, Sutter. <laughs> I love him. He's pretty funny. <laughs> So, like I just said in the movie, it's very fast paced. So we get this, we, but we like he doesn't fall off of her roof, and you don't see that, but you do see that they argue a lot and get in fights a lot, but then they end up getting back together. Mm -hmm. Very intimate. Mm -hmm. And this is the very quick sex scene. Brie Larson got naked for for the very first yes. time ever. Yes, it's literally like split second yes. almost. You don't see anything really. Yeah. Her back. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you barely even see Miles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you, really don't. <laughs> you see his legs. <laughs> All right. So the book continues and we learn details about how Sutter is an alcoholic. And it was, it was really funny because he's like, I hate those quizzes that see if you're an alcoholic. It's like, mm -hmm. are you drinking in the morning? Well, yeah, it's nice to start my day <laughs> off like that. Do you get an, like, does it bother you when people call you an alcoholic? Of course it would bother anyone getting <laughs> nagged at and all this sort of stuff. It's like, <laughs> eek. <laughs> and so we find out he had his first beer with his dad when he was like a kid, little six. kid, six years old mm -hmm. at a baseball game. He really began drinking in seventh grade though. So he held off for a little bit. And then we learn a little bit about his best friend. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit about his best friend Ricky and how he's super smart but he's never had a girlfriend because he just doesn't think he's what girls are looking for in a boyfriend and so now Sutter's mission Sutter is the type of kid that like really he has a heart of gold yes he if cares. you put it in the right yeah yeah he cares about everyone and he wants to 
help them help them as best as he can which is kind of what this whole book was about yeah and so <laughs> what did you not hear my cat no he's gonna scare the crap out of me again. come on no <laughs> please don't yeah he's coming for you i know <laughs> <laughs> i know it's not gonna happen i'm just gonna scream anyways because uh, it scares you so bad it does all right Allie's afraid of my cat <laughs> Jumps up and eats me, claws me. All right, so it's now Sutter's mission, as we said, to find Ricky a girlfriend. So they're driving around, and they see Tara and Bethany, who are girls on the softball team. And it turns out Tara's looking for Sutter anyways because she wants to get hooked up with some alcohol because her mom. Oh, I was going to say because he, he keeps his trunk lined with beer. He does, yes. <laughs> and so... uh Her mom finally kicked out her stepdad. So they pull off and Sutter gets the girls some drinks. And and then he comes up with this, hey, let's go down to the boats. Because they have like these cute romantic boat things that you can rent. And they go and do that. But he's like, oh, man, forgot my wallet. Mm -hmm. And then Ricky's like, I'll pay for you. And he's like, no, 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 I can do that. I'll go get it. And Bethany tries to get Tara to come too. And he's like, nah, you're coming with me. And they go off and. It was nice that Tara seemed to know what was happening. So she had no, like, thinking that Sutter was into her type of thing. She knew that he was with Cassidy. Right. So he, she fully, it wasn't like a mean girl moment where, haha, I got this guy now type of thing. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't feel like it. At no. Least. Yeah. No. No. They were just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this happens in the movie, but again, it's part of the fast paced beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I really like in the movie. Ricky goes, dude, I have your wallet as he's like go out and he's like, no, you don't. It's in the car. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. Okay. So then Tara, yeah. basically the only thing that gets left out is that we don't find out about Tara's dad. Yeah. Or, or then stepdad. this part, did we find out this part that Tara and uh, Sutter were hanging out? And this is the first time we hear that his dad works at the chase building. No. Yeah. Cause he doesn't work at the chase building in the movie. No, he's a pilot in the movie, uh-huh. but he also doesn't say that until he's hanging out with Amy. Yeah, because this is a big deal. Mm-hmm. This gets brought up multiple times. Yes. So then they go back and they get Ricky and Bethany. And so his plan worked really well. So Ricky and Bethany are in the back seat hanging out. And then as they're driving back to the girl's car, there's a car following them. They don't mm-hmm. notice. And they drop the girls off. And Tara hugs Sutter because while they were sitting at the chase building, he... Or she vented a lot about how she hates love and she thinks it's so stupid and she just she basically was almost about to cry or something mm-hmm. like like it was a very intimate emotional moment. Mm-hmm. So between she just, friends, yeah, between friends, and she just hugged him and said thank you. I had a wonderful evening. Thank you for letting me vent and everything. <laughs> but that's mm-hmm. all you need when you got a pissed off girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she Cassidy was behind him, slams the door comes out and it's like yelling at him and she's like all i wanted you to do was put my feelings before your own he's like that's what she wanted <laughs> <laughs> and she broke up with him right then and there mm-hmm. in the movie when sutter and her are hanging out in the car while the other two are in the boats you see headlights come up behind them and Cassie gets out of the car and just starts yelling at him. And so there's no hug. There's no nothing. It's just that they're hanging out in the car together. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. Well, and the fact that like we just said, they aren't, you don't hear them talking about anything substantial. Yeah. So the story goes on and Sutter works at like a men's clothing store, like a mom and pop shown owned one. Shown. Shown one. (laughs) Kind of like book them. Kind of was. Mm-hmm. Except for not a bookstore, a clothing <laughs> store. Yes. <laughs> but a small business. Mm-hmm. Do those, get those small businesses, guys. Yeah, gotta help them out because you'll find out in <laughs> the book. What happens if you don't? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So he really likes his boss. And his boss shares, or in Sutter shares about Cassidy. And he asks for advice because his boss is great at relationships, basically, like, because he's been married for however many years and it's successful. He has great kids and all that sort of stuff. And 
his boss is just like, she just wants you to take care of her. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you're what? so smart. Gosh. Ugh, not take care of her, care about her. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, she probably wants him to take care of her too, but yeah. the main thing is care about her. Oh. I was wondering, I was like, I don't remember this conversation, but okay. <sighs> Guys, it's my throat. <laughs> sure. Throwing me off. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so it goes, it keeps going and the talking about all Sutter's ex-girlfriends and man, has <laughs> <laughs> so many of them. Yeah. And he's like, I just don't get it. I'm really good at the beginning of relationships. I, um, great at the flirting, great at the jokes, you know, they really fall for me. But then a couple of months in, they're like, I don't give them what they want, even though I'm the, and what s- is it that they want? <laughs> yes. He just doesn't get it. And, um, Poor guy. I know. Poor guy, but also... <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you should have figured that one yeah. out. <laughs> so he tries to go talk to Cassidy, but her mom says she's out with a friend. So then he goes and finds out that she's at a life group. But it's not really a life group. <laughs> it's really like for people to go hook up at. <laughs> and so he's wasted. And he sees... When Mark. is he not? <laughs> yes. He sees... But like... There are a he few times extra ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. a couple times he's drunk throughout the whole book, but there's a couple times that it's, it gets bad. Yes. And it's, it's like, was, you feel bad for him and like, Ooh, dude, you should stop. Yeah. And this was one of them mm-hmm. because he finds Cassidy making out with Marcus, who is the star basketball player. Mm-hmm. And he's just spouting off randomness, like talking about Jesus. Cause they're at life group <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like this. <laughs> And Marcus is really sweet. He's like, can I drive you home? And he's like, nah. And Cassie's like, he's better driving drink anyways. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Which is horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> and so he like, you know, falls over trash cans and stuff on his way out. And it was like, it was not a good Sutter moment. No, no, it was not. And this basically happens. It's not really a life group. It's just at a party. Mm-hmm. And he goes and he's like, it's really cute because he gets all like spiffed up and he like on his way in he sees a vase of her, her flowers in the house where the party's at and he grabs one and he's like I'm gonna go give this to her and then he sees her with a guy and it's like but then he still starts to flirt oh sadder <laughs> yeah and then I also really like after he's gone and he's driving you see him driving with his head out the window <laughs> You didn't yell. It's because I watched him. I was prepared more. Uh, he He's yelling. I can't remember what he's yelling out the window, but he's, he's yelling. Yeah. He was not happy. No. Uh, no. And then one of my favorite cuts in this whole movie is after he's yelling and it cuts to black and it just pops up with the spectacular now. Oh, yeah. That was the beginning of the movie. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's yep. how quick all that went, you guys. That. Yeah. It was the pre it was before the title popped open. Yeah, yeah it was super quick. Oh, oh that was cute. <laughs> was super cute. He's praying so loud. Because <laughs> I was I wish I was allergic to Isn't cats. it the best feeling? It's cute. So it's the next day. And Sutter and Ricky are talking. Ricky's like, You should just ask Tara out. And he's like, I can't ask Tara out because then Cassidy will <laughs> think she's right and she's not right, even though he does <laughs> like Tara. Like he never goes into detail about like liking well, her. I was just going to say, I feel like Sutter is almost the typical. <laughs> can't be single. Can't be single male who also will go out with anything. Yeah. As long as it's a female. <laughs> yes. That's kind of, yeah. That's him. <laughs> yeah. And so he was also complaining about how he has to go to his sisters because he does not get along with his sister. But it's more so her uh, husband. Husband. Yeah. Keevan. Keevan. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Ricky gave him uh, some weed to calm down. Like he didn't smoke it right then and there, but he gave him some for later. That doesn't happen in the movie. <laughs> there you go. So Sutter goes to his sister's and as he's there, it's super boring. It's like a typical, you know, adult party. Cause aren't they like six, seven years apart or something like that? Yeah. They're like a significant amount. Apart. I think it's eight actually. Oh yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Okay. And so as they're there, they are more guests show up and then there's this really pretty girl that shows up named Hannah and he tries to get her attention but like 
stupidly like he's like i tried to use my hypnosis to have her come over to me but it wasn't really working and i've been there done that <laughs> <laughs> it never works no. so then <laughs> all of high school staring at my crushes like <laughs> come talk to me i know you like me <laughs> instead you just look like the creep <laughs> So he decided, hey, I'm going to go smoke this blunt and did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay. So he decides to go upstairs to smoke and he's like, perfect spot would be the bathroom at the in the master suite. Because <laughs> why Duh. not? It's probably the best bathroom. Yep. And when he's in there, he walks through his sister's room mm -hmm. and he sees a $300 bottle of scotch. He's like, oh man, I'm a whiskey guy, but how do you pass up $300 bottle of scotch? So he's like trying to figure out how to open it. And it says when Kevin comes up, his sister's husband, and he freaks out a little bit. He's like, oh my gosh. So he hides in the closet <laughs> and his blunt catches one of his suit jackets on fire and he dives out like freaking out. Right. Yeah. And of course, Holly and Eric are, Kevin. Kevin. Eric, Eric is his was name in the, the movie. movie. <laughs> Gosh. Kevin are freaking out, trying to put out the fire. And he's like, what I, about me? I <laughs> died. <laughs> I'm like, but a... what's also funny is he was holding a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> like, uh, it's true. <laughs> but at the same time, they're worried about the actual fire that's happening. <laughs> yeah. He's like not, not sued. He's not on fire. No. And he's just like, they only I care about that. I almost died. <laughs> Not all of us, <laughs> just me. Exactly. So for, Holly's freaking out at him and Sutter leaves and he gets wasted. This is another super drunk part. Mm -hmm. He goes and finds any bar that'll not check his ID and let him in. Mm -hmm. And he found one that had some college girls in it. And they just were like, oh, he's so cute. And like hung out <laughs> with him for a little bit. And then they went and left. And he's like, okay. And then he's like super wasted driving around and then kind of blacks out so the dinner party doesn't happen in the movie Ish. like this yeah but the girls at the bar happen after the whole Cassidy scene and I actually mm. that's one of my favorite Miles Teller moments because he he's acting so drunk so perfect he does <laughs> he really does when the girls leave and he's like oh girls come on I, know. <laughs> I was like oh you look like you're blasted <laughs> he did really good with that yeah so that kind of got smushed here, but none of what Allie just said happened in the movie. Nope. <laughs> I mean, the dinner party happens, but much different. Yeah, much, much different, much later. Yes. Oh, I guess. So my few notes that I do have are like a lot of the inner monologue that kind of makes you second guess liking Sutter is cut from the movie, which I kind of like because I feel like for the movie, you need to like Sutter. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot harder to like him in the book. When well, you, like if you were if the book was third yeah, party, you wouldn't really like Sutter. No, not at all. So, in a movie, they had to cut the stuff that makes you not like him. Yeah. Yeah, because the movie is third person. But then I also really love the writers did great with what they did right for the movie because so much of the dialogue is straight from the book mm -hmm. like verbatim from the book and i love that because that like in most movies it's like one line is verbatim and <laughs> it's like the one important line of the right. book whereas this it's almost everything yeah it was good and i love that now he wakes up under a tree with a girl looking at him <laughs> He's just like, what? <laughs> She's like, are you okay? And she knows who he is. She's like, calls him Sutter. He's like, how do you know who I am? She's like, oh, you know, we went, do we go to school together? <laughs> but you wouldn't know. My life. <laughs> yeah. And we find out her, she's Amy and she's up super early. It's like 5 a.m. doing a paper route. Gross. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And they were like, he offered to help with the paper out and they would look for his car because his car was nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. We find out she's doing the paper route all by herself because her mom and mom's boyfriend stayed super late at the casino and 
she doesn't really make money off. She makes like an allowance off this Mm -hmm. and it usually goes to paying bills. Basically we're getting the background of Amy is a big pushover and gets walked over and told what to do. And she does it type of girl. Yeah. But what's funny is I kind of, when I read it, I take it as she's a good girl. She's like kind hearted, sweet, a little too sweet because she does let people walk over her, but she doesn't take a. Fa- I mean, I I guess. No, I felt the same way. Well, what I'm trying to think because I feel like I've let people walk over me and I don't really like it. So I feel like I think it bugs her, but not to the point where she feels comfortable doing anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if she had never met Sutter, she probably would have gotten to that point. But yeah, yep. Sutter kind of was like, "What the hell? <laughs> Fix this." Because she also has, as Bree said, that sweetness that, like, you're happy when you're around her type of girl. Mm -hmm. And so Sutter's, like, drawn to it. Yeah. But he doesn't understand it. Yeah. And so they're, like, having a great time. They're, like, goofing around as they're uh, tossing papers out. Sutter's, like, having them call each other, like. Oh, no. Just Captain and Special Agent Danger. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, fire the torpedo. Yeah. So they're having a fun time. He said, you know what, even if we find my car, I'm going to help you finish my, your route. And sure enough, they find his car and it's freaking in the middle of a lawn. They have to push <laughs> it out because it's out of gas. And he's like, ah, that makes sense why I walked because I was out of gas. He's not even embarrassed by this. No. <laughs> like, it's my gosh. He's like, mm, another Tuesday morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they push it out and then um, he finishes her route with her. She gets some gas, and he promises to have lunch with her on Monday. <laughs> so this happens in the movie. Amy wakes him up, and this was when I started to feel like they were improvising the lines because mm. I was like, I don't know. It's so funny because it like how they acted it. It doesn't like obviously feel super improvised, but at the same time, I was like, hmm, this kind of seems like it is improvised. It's because it was so real, and it's like it was like an awkward like Mm -hmm. like i feel like it's really hard i mean me the actor no never acting before but i would think it'd be really hard to 100 percent pull off awkwardly (laughs) yeah and so yeah they did a really good job because i think they Mm -hmm. they probably were like good luck you know (laughs) say whatever you want and it's like like just make sure that you get this line in because most of his lines were from the book yeah so they probably got told, okay, you need to hit these beats at some point, but yeah. have fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're drunk and woke up. Yes. <laughs> <on the lawn. laughs> Plus, I lo- their chemistry is just so freaking good. It's cute. Together. I love them together so uh. much. My one note is that in the movie, Sutter actually, like, not that he doesn't seem to care in the book, but in the movie, it, like, they're playing hard on the romantic part of this yeah rather than in the book where it's like oh she's a sweet girl (laughs) yeah (laughs) she's letting people walk all over her that's wrong yeah so Sutter met up with ricky at school and they were talking about the or his and bethany's date ricky goes she's the perfect girl and like Mm -hmm. just going on and on about her how much she like is so happy and then Sutter's like hey let me tag along and ricky's like no it's kind of too early and Sutter just like doesn't get it <laughs> but he's like weren't you supposed to meet uh Bethany for lunch <laughs> Bethany, Amy. Amy for lunch <laughs> and Sutter almost forgot and he's like oh my gosh and Ricky starts accusing me like don't use Amy as a rebound she's a nice girl he's like this isn't a rebound I'm purely helping her with her confidence that's it that happens in the movie but it doesn't happen at school it happens at a gas station where Sutter is refilling his big seven up cup. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in Sutter's algebra class and he's just daydreaming about Amy. And he's like, I hope she, I don't disappoint her. You know, I'm going to get there early and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> his teacher, Mr. Aster <laughs> or Aster hole, as he likes to call him. <laughs> yep. Holds him after class because he's like, you haven't turned in your homework. And he's, and then he's like, and let's, you know, do some practice problems and all this sort of stuff. So he ended up being 15 minutes late to Amy. And she's like, it's okay. He's like, no, it's not okay. Which I was like, 
He's such a good guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I know. And so then at lunch, which is funny because yeah. obviously he also isn't. If Cassidy was, I know. <laughs> it's like he has good intentions, but yeah, clearly follow through isn't his thing. Yeah. So at lunch, they're chatting and Sutter's telling some wild stories. And he asks Amy to tell some stories and she starts telling <laughs> stories about him. I love that part. Yes. And he's like, okay, but what about you? <laughs> and so then we learn that like she got flashed as she's doing her paper route. <laughs> but and her, her mom's mom like, made her finish it. Yeah, she's like, suck it up. Keep going. So it's like adding more to the, oh man, this girl needs help. Yeah. And as she's talking like crystal is her best friend comes up and um she hates sutter <laughs> she's like oh you finally <laughs> showed up and she drags amy away to french club but before she left sutter is like asked amy to help him tutor him in algebra yeah and that happens yeah I in think, the movie yeah i think the main difference is that amy's not waiting for him outside of the lunchroom that and uh i feel like the Mr. Astor in the movie was like a lot happier yeah, than the one in the book. Yeah. Yeah. The one in the book seemed very strict and like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of this kid's crap type of thing. <laughs> Whereas in the movie, he's like, all right, let's do math together. And like, well, he's probably been having to deal with shutter shit for forever. Shutter, he's like, shutter, sh- <laughs> shutter shit <laughs> for forever. So <laughs> yeah true how you as a teacher what would you do gosh i know because he's probably had to retake the class because he's, he's probably had to retake it he's probably failed it multiple times he probably hasn't worked on his homework for forever right so how do you get a kid engaged <laughs> exactly and i bet you he's probably tried yelling at him before <laughs> and it didn't work so I would time do. to have fun <laughs> all right so his mom agrees to let him go to amy's because oh because he had gotten grounded yeah and uh but they're like okay you can go to amy's and so amy's brother's super obnoxious like a typical i i don't know how old he was but i 11 11 yeah he was a typical 11 year old boy and uh amy comes down and gets sutter and takes her to his room or her room and the house is a disaster like it's like gross Mm -hmm. and everything but her room is so clean and Mm -hmm. it's like her space space to escape and they chat for a bit and she find, Sutter finds out she's into NASA and horses and all this sort of stuff. And she likes science fiction and she's actually writing a science fiction book of her own. And in his head, he's kind of like making fun of her. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, he is. He's like, what the hell? How am I going to help this girl? Yes. She's got pictures of horses everywhere. Yes, that she drew and they're not that great. And <laughs> They look like a dog. Yes. <laughs> But it was like all said nice. Like it wasn't where you were reading it and you're like, wow, he's kind of a jerk. It was like in a nice, it was weird. It was weird. So this happens in the movie. Well, I, Sutter doesn't have to get his mom to let him go because he's not grounded in the movie. Uh But he goes and one of my favorite scenes, I was going to record myself at this part because I was only cracking up so hard. But I was like, nah, I can't record this because now it won't be a genuine reaction. But I love when the little brother like slowly puts yes. his arms up and then flips up. <laughs> <laughs> and Amy's funny. like, he just learned how to do that. <laughs> uh, Gosh. They, her room isn't as nerdy as I would have pictured from the book, but she does have some stuff and I do like that he like makes her talk about it and uh-huh. she kind of is like shy and then she's like, okay. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. So then Sutter goes home and he starts to, cause he's grounded. Oh yeah. We didn't talk about that. How, uh, his mom and dad are separated and it, she remarried like someone pretty rich and well off. And so she has a new fancy life where she gets her nails done and her hair done all this time, all the time. And he's just like, she just doesn't really care about me. Like she's not going to, cause they grounded him and he's like, it's really, as soon as she goes, gets her hair done, she's going to forget all about this type of thing. Like mm-hmm. that's how his, who his mom is. Mm-hmm. And she's not like that in the, no, she's a single mom, never remarried. She's a nurse and she works hard all day. Yes. And night and just wanted Sutter to hang up her clothes. Yes. And he did not. So, 
when Sutter gets home, he knows he can't sneak out tonight because he's going to... Oh, because before he left Amy's, he invited her to yeah. a party on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, okay, so I can't sneak out tonight because I'm going to sneak out tomorrow night. <laughs> and so he's like, he decides to start doing research on this astronaut that she loves or no. NASA lady. No. <laughs> Who? The main character of her books. I thought it was a real person. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. No, he wanted to go and learn more about the books that she was into. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so he's like doing all this research and then all of a sudden Cassidy emails him. I am. I am Sam. Excuse me. It's like, hey, we should be friends. Blah, blah, blah. blah. And And he's like, I know what this means. Yes. (laughs) And so he invites Cassidy to the party on Saturday because him and Amy are not romantic. So there's nothing wrong with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, his plan is to find Amy a guy at the party. Yes. Kind of like what he did for Ricky. Yes. It's not a date type thing to him just yet. Yes. And that happens in the movie. Yep. So they get to the party and Sutter's whole plan, as Bree just said, was to hook Amy up with someone, boost her confidence. And so they make with their way over to the keg and she, he gets them some beer and she's like, I don't drink. And he's like, you don't have to drink. Just hold it. It looks like you're having fun then. And I went in senior year, mm-hmm. I think it was Brandy. Brandy and Brant threw a huge party. Like, I can't even remember where it was. It was like out in the middle of nowhere. And Maggie and their group went. And so I went with them. And I think I had a beer. But for the majority of the time, I held it. Because I was like, if I'm holding it, first off, people won't keep handing you drinks. Uh-huh. So then you're not more likely to drink more and get drunk or more and you know yeah and you look like you're having a good time so that's what i also thought it made me look cool to be at the party (laughs) with a red solo cup in my hand when i wasn't that nerd and then what made it worse is on our way home after i had finished the beer we're driving home (laughs) we a cop was following us for the majority of the way home and so we were all like oh my (laughs) gosh but we made it home fine the cop wasn't even coming for us i think he was just driving home as well when you were a senior yeah i didn't have my first drink till i was 20 well i i had mine when i was 16 wow with my dad <laughs> hey look yeah, Sutter. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but then i didn't drink yeah oh wait that's a lie nope i had how old are we in sixth grade um like 11 Oh my gosh. Pucker. Apple Pucker had that at Katie's. I guess my first drink was an accident and my dad had mixed a drink in a Coke can because we were on vacation somewhere. Mm-hmm. I was like, Coke, like, can I have some soda? And he's like, no, it's not. You won't like it. And I drank it. That you was my like, first I drink. I will. Yes. <laughs> I didn't full it. I took a sip and it was like, oh my gosh, this is so gross. So I was probably like seven. So one sip. At seven, and I didn't again until 20. I just took, like, a swig off of the pucker bottle. At sixth grade? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Sixth or seventh grade? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That's hilarious. I remember I it tasted so good, and I was into math at that point in time, and so I was like, I bet you he'll think this is cool if he found out. (laughs) He never found out, so... (laughs) my gosh i I couldn't even talk to that kid (laughs) (laughs) my goodness Uh, anyways okay so they're at the party and this kid named jason comes over and he's basically like the player he tries to sleep with every every girl out there and so he starts talking to amy and sutter sends him off by like telling him a lie that some girl some really hot girl broke up with her boyfriend who's super jealous which was a lie and (laughs) the boyfriend definitely is not broken up with and so but then a guy named cody shows up and this is who sutter's been waiting for because he's the perfect nerd for her perfect so they start chatting because they read the same space graphic novel and sutter dips out because he sees cassidy and he goes over and he's being the life of the party and um but it's not really working To get her back. So Mm -hmm. uh, then all of a sudden a fight breaks out from this jealous boyfriend and some other guy. Not, But he doesn't. He's assuming 
right now that it's with Jason. He's like, oh, yeah. But then, oh, but then, yeah, someone says, hey, Jason's over there flirting with Amy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? And he runs over Mm -hmm. and Sutter again is like, hey, you know, there's just a fight over there. And he's. Well, first he finds out that, well, he finds them and like, oh, yeah, this guy has a hit. Amy pinned up against a tree and he's whispering in her ear and Amy looks uncomfortable. And he, she's he got her another drink. Like she finished the beer. And oh he yeah. got her more. Yep. So she's a little oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um so Sutter came up with a story about like, hey, whatever that guy's name is, he's coming mm-hmm. over and he's finding any girl any guy that has talked to his girl. And that scares him off. Yes. Yeah. And, and so Sutter took Amy for a walk down the river and they're talking and he's like you know you just need to start doing this take a swig <laughs> and then they start cussing well he gets out. pissed about how she lets crystal walk over oh yeah so they start cussing and swearing out all the people basically in amy's life just like saying get off my back but no with- it's get off you gotta say it Allie. no i'm not saying it you gotta say it I'm you are amy it. no you can say it i cannot say it yes, i can you you could say one of them. No. The second one. Not even the first one. Just the second one. I'll say the get off my motherfucking. No, that's <laughs> almost the worst one. I don't want to say that one. <laughs> can't take the Lord's name in vain like that. Is that what he says? All right. So get off my goddamn back. No. Mother fudger. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best you're going to get. <laughs> she said it before on this podcast. <laughs> by an accident <laughs> anyways <laughs> so they're swearing all these people off that's what you need to be telling people when they come up with plans that you don't want to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they'd be like what? what i just asked if you wanted to hang out this saturday <laughs> Reply. i got two oh so then he says okay one more like what's your ex like what man has done you wrong she's like i don't have an ex guys don't see me like that (laughs) and then Sutter just kisses her to show her he's like yes they do yes they do and she's like no 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 and he kisses her to show see you are beautiful guys do see you like that he was like two guys were hitting on you before and all this sort of stuff but it wasn't like a it wasn't like a Jacob kiss <laughs> where it <laughs> was awkward and I was like, Why did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it was like sweet. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, Amy wanted it. <laughs> That's a big difference, That's right? True. There. <laughs> I mean, I, we assume she wanted it. We uh, she know. wasn't pushing him off, but yeah. also we were reading it from Sutter's point of view. So <laughs> very true. She could have been like, oh no. And then put been a pushover and just let uh, him do it. Yeah. Maybe. Man. No, we're I, not going to talk Sutter down. He's a, no, I like he's him. a good guy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I like Sutter a lot. Okay, so the party happens in the middle of the day. Okay. I was going to ask you. Yeah. I was like, I read it as a night. No, it's okay. a night thing because he has to sneak, sneak out. out. That's what I thought. <laughs> nope. Okay. It's in the middle of the broad daylight. And <laughs> my note whole first party is wrong (laughs) there you go okay here we go first real wrong thing (laughs) yeah so cody comes and we can assume that that other dude is jason but jason isn't creepy at all Mm -mm. he's just kind of another guy that's kind of hitting on amy when sutter and amy show up cassie is incredibly jealous of amy and keeps like looking over and like what was not in the book at all yeah no um well and then my next few notes are when they're already oh yeah because basically he gets amy the beer that whole thing happens then he leaves amy with cody talking about a book and he goes to cassidy and is like hey let's go get a beer so then they go to the keg for him to pour their beer but then marcus shows up and they they leave and he gets all butthurt about that and then he sees that amy's by herself is that it that's when he sees what's his name talking to her oh yeah he sees jason talking to her and he's just talking to her yeah (laughs) like it's not anything weird at all and he comes up and is like hey uh let's 
go. Yeah. <laughs> on a walk. So then on this walk, Sutter tells Amy about his first beer, which is something that was only in her monologue uh-huh. forever ago. And then Amy, rather than saying that she wants to go to college and has this dream of going to college, her big secret is that she got into college. Which was a big de- change because mm-hmm. she has no confidence to tell her mom she can't do the paper route anymore to mm-hmm. leave. Mm-hmm. And it was also in Philly. I didn't think it wasn't it in like it's in St. Louis. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was yeah. like, what? And then the whole telling people to get off her back happens. But it's in the book. It starts because Sutter is upset about how Crystal treated her mm-hmm. in the movie. It's just I don't know if my mom will let me go. And he's like, oh, let's cuss out your mom. Let's do that. I also really liked, I did like in the movie when, because they, they stop and they're talking because he's asking her about the exes and like the leaf like lands on his face. And yeah. so she like lightly moves it and then he like, it's just a cute moment it's between cute. them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So the and next. Was, oh, was sad. Uh, Amy's whole thing about the ex thing and like, Oh, I've never had any exes. That's exactly what I said to my first boyfriend. <laughs> Same exact, like, verbatim almost. Where I was like, no, guys don't see me like that. And yeah. he's like, what? I was like, no. Aww. <laughs> All right. So the next morning, Sutter's trying to remember everything that happened because he cannot remember what they talked about on the way home. So glad he was driving. But okay, whatever. And... He thinks he promised Amy that he'd go to prom with her, but he can't be sure. Because, like, why would he do that? Because obviously him and Cassidy are going to be back together by then. So it just didn't make sense. <laughs> and he calls Ricky and but finds out Ricky's at church with Bethany, which is not something Ricky does. Is, he does not go to church. All of his ideas on everything in life do not align with church. <laughs> exactly. And so then later he calls again and they hang out at the mall and people watch and... uh he finds out that Ricky now also is only smoking weed on weekends. He's like, and not drinking and not drinking. He's just kind of like, what, what's going on? And Ricky's like, when you're in a relationship, you do things for each other. (laughs) And like Sutter just can't, it doesn't, what? It's mind boggling (laughs) to him. And Ricky's like, okay, Sutter, what are you going to do when Amy falls in love with you? And he's like, nah, that's not going to happen. Like people get tired of me after a month. Yeah. She won't fall in love with me. Mm-hmm. So the next morning happens in the movie. I like how they do it. I like seeing the like interspersed like hazy memories kind of where yeah. the audio isn't totally there. Yes. <laughs> He's like, uh, what? Yep. Waking up at noon. Mm-hmm. But the rest of that does not happen. <laughs> nope. All right. So Cassidy and Sutter hang out one Thursday and they're getting all flirty and, uh, Sutter goes shopping to all the stores, which he normally wouldn't do, but he's working hard to get Cassidy back and everything like that. So eventually they go back to his place, her place, her place, her place. And they start fooling around and they're about to have sex, but she starts crying because she's like, I think I love Marcus, but I have more fun with you and I just don't know what to do. And they chatted and they decided not to go through with it and. He was all sad and bummed. This scene happens in the movie, but they're not about to have sex. They're just kind of hanging out, talking. And I actually really like this scene in the movie because Cassidy calls Sutter out on being drunk. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Sutter, you're drunk. And he's like, yeah, but what's the problem with that? (laughs) What else is new? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I will say the first time that I saw this movie, I didn't realize he was drunk. Like, I knew he obviously had partying and like had the like two times where uh-huh. he was super super drunk but i was like that's every high school student and then when she said that that's when i kind of started realizing like oh he's carrying that cup around all the time yeah. and, like <laughs> this so okie dokie so sutter is in a bad mood obviously and eventually ricky invites him to one of bethany's friends hotel <laughs> party <laughs> And it ended up being a super lame party. And he's like in the car. He's like, were we supposed to bring presents? And she's like, well, it's a birthday party. Like you can just tell Bethany does not is like not Sutter. not a fan of Sutter. And um, it ended up being super lame because there was like super light beer. And like 
it was just like people talking it, he was like what type of party is this and it's funny as me as someone who doesn't party i would rather go to this kind of a party than an actual party 100 like, yeah yes i, I found out in college that these are called kickbacks oh from my freshman year roommate uh-huh. and because i told her she was like what you don't like parties because she was la party girl and i was like no like if i went to a party i would rather like be able to sip on a drink and sit and talk to people and she's like that's a cake back that's what you do before you go party no it's like oh well then give me the cake back and then i'll go home <laughs> yeah yes. exactly <laughs> cake back better start at seven because i won't be in bed by nine there you go <laughs> so they hung out for a while wait just kidding i skipped a bunch hang on <laughs> so it was super lame party so he goes downstairs oh no so he tries to liven up the party <laughs> And like yeah. everyone gets so there's, annoyed. There's a guy that's singing a song on the guitar and like he's singing Christian songs. And so he's like, oh my God, let me, I've got a better song for you. And he starts to try and like come up with his own song. Yes. And it was just not working out. So everybody's like, go sit down. Oh my gosh. And what's really sad is like, <laughs> part of me feels like I really like him because he's the drunk person you want to watch. <laughs> Like, right have you ever been around a drunk that's just so hilarious that you're yes. like oh i want to like watch you're my guy yes <laughs> i almost feel like that's sutter <laughs> and oh, so finally, sutter. yeah finally he's like this is lame and he goes downstairs to go to the arcade because what hotel doesn't have an arcade apparently it'd be so cool i know and so no kidding what yeah and so they're down there and he sees an old girlfriend and they have this like uh italian mafia bit they do Mm -hmm. back and forth it was like really super sweet Mm -hmm. and they hang out for a while and they go and do exercise bikes because they're both drunk well i don't know if she's drunk but he's wasted again and well she just got to the party so i doubt she's even Mm -hmm. had anything unless she was pre-gaming but yeah Yeah, probably not and so He's on the bike and he freaking falls off the bike and smacks his head. <laughs> and she's like, that's one of the things I love about you, Sutter, is you don't get embarrassed. And he really doesn't because no. he's like, well, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, come on, I need I need to relax. My head is killing me. So they go to the like joking around and they go to the hot tub and he just gets in with all his clothes on and they just sit there and they're hanging out. And then like they start to kiss, but she starts giggling and she's like, no, you know, no, we're better off as mm-hmm. friends and um and he's like i realized once you do the italian mobster thing with them you can't make out with them exactly (laughs) and she's just like we just need to find someone totally new totally different you need to find someone exactly opposite Mm -hmm. of cassidy Mm -hmm. and he's like oh interesting i might have just the person (laughs) none of that happens in the movie okay (laughs) (laughs) so we get back to school and Crystal comes over and basically tells Sutter he's horrible <laughs> because he's been avoiding Amy because he was like, I'm not avoiding her. I mean, I wouldn't run into her normally. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going about my day and not making an effort to get in contact with her. And even though Loki, he has been avoiding her because yes. he's upset that he said he would take her. to prom. Yep. <laughs> yep. But this kind of kicks him back into gear and he's like, yeah, I really dropped the ball on the Amy project. And so he goes to her house after school and her brother answers the door again. And um, mom and mom's boyfriend are also there and they're like watching CSI. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, hang on. We want to talk to you. So they're like, but you just got to wait because we got like a couple minutes left to the show. And Amy's standing there so awkward. She's like, I'm so sorry. And eventually he's like, you want to go like, let's go grab a bite. So they get to dip out without having to be lectured by mm-hmm. Amy's parents or mom and mom boyfriend. So I just realized that something happens in the movie that hasn't happened yet and doesn't happen for a while in the book. So after the Sutter and Cassidy scene, the next scene is Marcus storming into Sutter's job. In the book, he doesn't storm into Sutter's job. He just waits for him outside in the car. And it's a sweet talk that I'll let Ali cover. Okay. <laughs> So in the movie, the whole thing with Crystal happens where she was like, why are you being a dick? Why are you ignoring Amy? So then he's driving. You don't know where to. And then he flips a U-turn 
and then he goes to Amy's. <laughs> I really love this is one of my favorite like scenes in the movie because he's like, Hey, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been like really busy. I've been just dealing with life. And then he's like, But uh my sister's having this dinner and I was thinking maybe you would want to go. And she's like, Oh, uh yeah, sure. I guess that would be fine. Yeah. Like and he's like, Yeah, it's later tonight. And she's like, Oh, okay. So like what time? And he's like, Yeah, in ten minutes. And she's like, oh, oh, okay. So 10 minutes from now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was super cute. <laughs> so then they go and here's our dinner scene that happened in the movie, but it doesn't happen or in the movie, in the book, but it doesn't happen like it does in the book. In the movie, this is where we find out a lot about Amy's backstory. We find out that her dad died here that's one of my favorite things because like his sister says something about like oh because they're talking about finding true love and stuff like that and Sutter's like yeah but you guys are just gonna get divorced anyway look at mom and dad and the sister's like no not all relationships end in doom and gloom and Sutter goes our parents are divorced Amy's parents are divorced and Amy goes oh actually no he's like oh what <laughs> and she's like quiet then I think the sister's like, what happened, Amy? <laughs> He's like, oh, my dad died. Yeah. <laughs> she was just like, yep, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like super awkward. Yeah. Yep. Okie dokie. Yeah. They go to this local place called Marvin's and they get some chili fries and 7-Up, which <laughs> Sutter spikes. <laughs> and this is when we find out that Amy's dad was super smart. But he was addicted to huffing gasoline and he ended up dying, which in the movie he was addicted to painkillers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, she also shares her dreams of her future, um, about how she wants to get married and work for NASA and work, live on a horse ranch and all this sort of stuff. And Sutter's so like, yeah, I you know, don't think I'd want to get married. Basically, the whole uh, dinner, dinner scene, scene that just happened is just this first date type thing. yeah which i liked it more personal than yeah in front of his with, sister i know it was so awkward i'm like whoa okay yep and so um they go back to her house because marvin's was closing down and they sit in the car and talk for a while and this is when she asks like hey did you mean it when you invited me to prom on saturday mm-hmm. and he said of course and he like well first she goes did you mean what you said on saturday oh yeah yeah and he's like, uh, mm, I said a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> I was like, which part? Yeah. She's like, about prom. And he's like, damn it, I did ask her. Yes. And so he kissed her to make her like prove that, like, hey, yeah, like, yeah, we're going, I'm going. How is that proof? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and she kissed back. He just keeps kissing her to shut her up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So she kissed him back pretty intensely and then she asked if they're a boyfriend and girlfriend. It was like so so high school. Yeah. Like now I'd be like, it's so awkward, like you're just going on a going First to prom. Date. Yeah, in a prom. But at the same time in high school it'd be like, Oh, you're, you're together. My boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. And no. so it's just yeah. funny how high school is so different. So different than adulthood. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, like now we go on one date. It's like, mm. yeah, eh, we got to go on like three or four or five yeah. until we figure out life. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, this caught Sutter off guard naturally, but he's like, yes. And he like was con- not confused, but he's like, wow, it actually felt really good to say yes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's like, I could have, you know, had sex with her right then and there because he like cared that much about her he's like but that wouldn't be right with amy Mm -hmm. and so he's like he's realizing she's different than Mm -hmm. all the other girls Mm -hmm. i thought that was very cute yeah Yeah. uh so obviously that dinner happened differently but then they go to a like playground and are hanging out and the whole are you taking me to prom happens yeah but she doesn't ask if they're Mm-mm. boyfriend and girlfriend now. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Yeah. It's just the next scene they're at school and they're kissing on the stairs too. So yeah. You so we just assume. assume. Yeah. Yep. So it's the next day and Ricky is not okay with the situation. He's like, 
Sutter, I thought you were just, you know, trying Helping to her. build her confidence. What are you doing? And Sutter's trying to defend Amy. He's like, I, she's a great girl. I'm helping her build her confidence. You know, I'm helping her get boyfriend experience. Like, she's going to leave me in a month. It's fine. And uh, then Amy and Sutter are hanging out at, because Sutter is getting really annoyed with, like, almost being like, judge. It's just like hanging out with his friends isn't as fun anymore and he's like i'd rather be hanging out with amy mm-hmm. i'm like oh it's so cute yeah. and so they're hanging out and they go to a grocery store and crystal comes up and like makes a comment <laughs> <laughs> i really want, i need to play you out the author does crystal's voice it's so freaking <laughs> funny. Uh, um anyways okay where are we at <laughs> um da, 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 da. so crystal they're hanging makes out a comment huh <laughs> I said Crystal makes a comment. Yes, they hang out in the grocery store. And Crystal comes up, makes a comment about leaving pets outside, calling Sutter a pet. And (laughs) Amy starts calling her all these names and everything, making jokes about her. And she's like, are you drunk? And Amy's like, yes, I am. I'm I'm spectacularly drunk. Yes, (laughs) That's one of my favorite things about this book, too, because spectacular gets said so often. So much. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But like not overused yeah like, it's, it's not perfect... annoying it's just like oh there it is and then it only gets used as spectacular now once mm-hmm. and it's like just so powerful i love it so yes much. it was good i liked it a lot mm-hmm. and so um as she keeps walking a walking off amy keeps making fun of her and Sarah just kind of feels bad because he's like it's mm-hmm. not easy seeing someone lose a friend mm-hmm. and as much as he doesn't like crystal She's she, like, that's also your friend, though. <laughs> yeah, it's her friend. And then she just, he just watched Crystal lose Amy as a friend. It was just mm-hmm. like a not a mm-hmm. super fun moment. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that doesn't. Uh, well, Ricky tells Sutter that he's not okay with the situation. But then Sutter's like, well, have you thought that maybe I'm attracted to her? Mm-hmm. And yeah, the rest of it does not happen. So Sutter and Cassidy still hang out on Thursdays, but now it's like a hundred percent as friends. They still haven't told their significant others yet, but they're not fooling around or anything. They're just drinking and chatting. And mm. one day someone told him, told him that Marcus is looking for him and he's like, Oh my gosh. And so he goes to work and he tells his boss the situation. And I loved his boss was basically said Sutter. Oh, he asked, does that make me a bad guy? And he's like, you're not a bad guy. You just don't think about consequences. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's true. Yes. And so then a, sh- a car shows up at his work and he's just kind of like, oh my gosh. And his boss is like, okay, wave high if you're good and low if you need me. Mm-hmm. And so he goes out and Marcus is just kind of freaking out. Like he's not angry. He's just like, you know, I think Cassidy is going to leave me like she has so much more fun with you and like I just don't know what to do and all this sort of stuff and Sutter boosts him up and he's like you know you and Cassie have the same interests you both are like save the planet people he's like maybe you know just tone it down a little bit like don't expect her to do things and he's like I don't expect her to and it's like it's just a really great building him up Mm -hmm. moment which yeah which kind of shows improvement because this whole book has been about Sutter wanting to get with Cassidy. Yeah. Yep. And so, but we also find out that Marcus knows about their, their Thursday hangouts. Yes. So now he's like, Oh, okay. I got to tell Amy. Yeah. Uh, Cassidy and Sutter only hung out that once way forever ago. And that conversation with Marcus already happened. So, yep. Meh. I know. I was really bummed that they didn't keep hanging out in the movie. Because I really liked Mm -hmm. in the book, Cassidy was just, she was a lot nicer. (laughs) Yeah, she was. (laughs) She really was. Yes. I was waiting for her to be mean girl the whole time and she was not. There's a reason why I hate her in the movie. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I don't blame you. (laughs) So Sutter has been super cautious to sleep with Amy because he doesn't want to sleep with her and then break it off with her or like. She, he knows that it's going to connect her to him in a way yes like because it'll be her first and so he's like mm, i don't want to do that yeah exactly so but so we'll stick to kissing and nothing else yes but amy asks if he wants to 
stay, stay the, the night. night and help with the paper out the next day. And her parents mm-hmm. are gone and her brother's gone. So they're chatting on the couch and watching a movie. And she starts asking about his dad and meeting him. And Sutter keeps saying no. But she's being very consistent to the point where uh, he snaps at her. Mm-hmm. And she's shocked and starts crying and apologizing. Like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and to show her it's okay, he starts kissing her like hardcore. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, should we move this to the bedroom? Cause I kept falling off the couch all, or almost <laughs> falling off the couch. And, um, and then she's like, can, should we take our clothes off? <laughs> and they eventually, they sleep together. Mm-hmm. And we learn now that because he's he's saying, oh, she's like, that was wonderful and magical and all this sort of stuff. He's like, well, you know, it's not that, you know, it's hard to be a disappointment when you don't have anything to compare it to. <laughs> and this is when we find out that Amy has had sex before because her mom's boyfriend, who was 20 years old, came over and basically raped her when she was 14. <laughs> yeah, huh? mom's boyfriend's son oh gosh yes i'm sorry i guess that's an important word i was like i said it everything's right (laughs) Uh, oh my god that would have been (laughs) worse (laughs) if she didn't tell her mom i would have been like amy i have issues with you (laughs) well i mean this isn't much better no yes but i mean i get why she didn't tell because yeah girls never think that well, she thought it was her fault. She still does. I was going to say, yeah. And Sad. the problem is, is when girls report it too often, nothing happens. So. Yeah. Sad. Mm-hmm. And then with a mom who she gets flashed and she's like, keep going mm-hmm. on your paper out. Like, mm-hmm. why? Nothing would come of it anyways. And then Sutter decides that, okay, I'm going to share my deep, dark secret too. Mm-hmm. That his dad does not work. His DD. Yeah, I know. That's why I paused. <laughs> I was like, What? <laughs> Sutter just has a built in DD. Yes. <laughs> Needs one. <laughs> Does not work at the Chase building. He said he's been telling this lie since he was a kid. He has no idea where his dad works. He's told this lie so much to so many people that he's been almost starting to believe it himself. But he doesn't know where his dad is. So in the movie, they do have sex, but it's not because she doesn't invite him over. Because he's helping with the paper route the next day. It's just their boyfriend, girlfriend. So their next logical step is to cross that line. Uh, There's no rape in the movie. Mm -mm. And this is when you find out that he lies that his dad's a pilot. Mm -hmm. And that he doesn't know where his dad is. Mm -hmm. So Sutter tells Ricky about sleeping with Amy. And Ricky's like, dude what are you doing (laughs) and he tells cassidy at their thursday hangouts and cassidy is like i actually think amy's a really good fit for you like she's Mm -hmm. gonna be good for you Mm -hmm. and he's just like why does everybody keep saying that like Mm -hmm. why do i need some good for me like i'm i'm good (laughs) (laughs) and uh then we find out sutter has big plans for prom um he wants to rent a limo and like make this a great night but ricky already has plans to go with bethany and tara and them Mm-hmm. And, and he's like he cannot join their group <laughs> nope and then he's like okay i'll try cassidy and marcus we'll double date so they do a double date amy like spills her whiskey at the <laughs> oh, they they sneak in a vodka bottle and she drops it in the lobby vodka. yeah <laughs> yeah it's like this whole awkward thing and ricky or marcus doesn't drink yeah so it was just like it was a horrible first double date and then after their sutter's talking to cassie he's like so you want to do a limo together and she's like no we have plans we booked this months ago yeah and he's like and she's like you're probably not gonna find anyone since prom is this weekend <laughs> he's like yeah i probably should get my tux she's like Sutter, you better not ruin this for Amy. That's when I start liked her officially. I was like, yeah. oh, she doesn't want it to get ruined for Amy. She's like, prom is a big deal for girls. Don't ruin this for her. Get your act together. <laughs> I thought it was so cute mm-hmm. and sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of that <laughs> happens in the movie. <laughs> I didn't realize how much, like, they keep it so the same, but they cut so much out. Yeah, they cut a lot out, but the story is there. 
yeah like the important key parts are there Mm -hmm. but yeah amy stood up to her mom about not doing the paper out the next morning so that she could have a night out with sutter after prom because they get a hotel room Mm -hmm. and amy suggested that he stand up to his mom to find out where his dad is that made him upset again Mm -hmm. and talking about his dad just pisses him off yep and so it's the night of prom and he goes to pick amy up and they go to marvin's because Mm -hmm. it's their local place their place Mm -hmm. and at first she's kind of bummed which i would have been too hi yep (laughs) but he's like but it's all about the sentiment it's our first date and all this sort of stuff which i really feel like he came up with on the fly (laughs) yes i think so too i think it was like a mix of he didn't want to be seen with her Uh uh-huh and he also didn't (laughs) make reservations yep (laughs) And so Amy's a little bummed, but Mm -hmm. she seems to be enjoying dinner. And Sutter got her her very own flask that matched Mm -hmm. his. Wow. (laughs) She was like super excited about it. I'm like, oh, no, Amy. This girl (laughs) who didn't drink. And now she's like, I got my own flask and it matches Sutter's. (sighs) Whatever. (laughs) And he's like, the best part is it's full. It's like, yeah. (laughs) Great. (laughs) So. I guess Marvin's happens in the that happens right no oh <laughs> they don't go to Marvin's oh no they don't they had, they're just on his car I know I actually like that prom yeah I think it's cuter I I like that they don't have a dinner <laughs> yeah which is less realistic but yeah uh yeah and everything else still happens caught the flask and everything. Yeah, yeah but she's excited because he engraved her name on it yeah mm-hmm. he didn't do that in the book right now yeah okay. Yeah, they go to prom and they're both drinking their spiked drinks and Cassidy comes over and tries to get them to dance and Amy doesn't want to dance so Cassidy asks this is this is another one that I was like did I type that wrong Cassidy asks if Mm -hmm. she can dance with Sutter right Mm -hmm. because in the movie in the movie Amy's like go dance with her okay yeah 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 um and so they dance and Cassidy's uh talking about how he needs to chill with amy because she's turning basically an <laughs> alcoholic too and he's like i didn't you know i'm here to dance not get lectured and he goes back to the table and now amy's ready to dance because watching him and cassidy dance mm-hmm. was not her she's favorite like, thing nope and so they dance for a bit and then they decide to go on a walk because the king and queen is going on and mm-hmm. he stutters just like that's so stupid mm-hmm. and so this is when she shares all her plans of going to st louis she, her sister got her a job at a bookstore and all this sort of sort of stuff sort of sort of stuff <laughs> <laughs> like yeah uh, all oh. this stuff <laughs> sort of sort of stuff <laughs> and she asks for Saturday to move in down with her mm-hmm he doesn't know what to say. He's, he's like, like, wait, what? Yeah, You're supposed to be sick of me right now. Yeah, he's like, he makes it a rule not to talk about future with girls. Because he doesn't have a plan for the future. Yep. And she says, we should find your dad because uh, that'll help us. So we won't end up like your parents. Because he was trying to use that as an excuse. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, parents didn't work out. And she's like, well, let's find your dad. And then we'll know what really happened and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he can't find a way out of it. So he says, yeah, sure. I'd love to go. And they go back to prom and he gets, he's like, it was describing his stages of drunk. And it was like, he was at the stage where like, he was at the low. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he wants to put in Dean Martin on the DJ, but he, he can't figure out the thing. So he starts singing it. No, horribly. because he brought a mixtape for them to play. Because he planned on giving Sneaking it to the it. Yeah. DJ. But it, the, the <laughs> yeah. system doesn't work like that. Yeah. And um, so he starts singing it. <laughs> and then Mr. Aster comes to escort him off the stage. Mm-hmm. And in the mic, he calls him Mr. Asterhole. <laughs> and that got him kicked out of prom. <laughs> uh, so in the movie, like we said, Amy tells Sutter to go dance with Cassidy. And they don't dance like gross because in the book it was that she was like cassie was getting a little too close to sutter to where he was getting aroused Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's what made amy mad but that was not the case in the movie in the movie they danced once and then he went and sat down with amy and then they're walking down the halls having that talk 
and it wasn't at a racetrack. So they weren't able to go look at all the like horse stuff mm-hmm. that Amy was super into. But my main note here is this movie makes me miss being in a relationship because I really like how they like were like holding hands and like spinning each other around and dancing Aww. all drunkenly <laughs> like talking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just they're so cute. Their chemistry is amazing. I love them. They were cute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. Okay. So they go back to their hotel room and the plan is to change and get to the parties the after parties and refill their flasks of course damn straight and so but amy had other ideas she comes out and she's all in her cute little she comes lingerie. out comes out <laughs> she comes out all in her cute little lingerie and or underwear she's in lingerie no she's in like underwear i thought she was in pajamas i thought she was in lingerie <laughs> no it was definitely not lingerie i think it's just her panties you're right just her panties panties okay and uh so she comes out in her panties and wants to get some yeah oh there we go okay <laughs> i was like where the heck am i i was wondering i was like what's taking you so long um so so i was like no you know we'll do that later let's go to the party <laughs> and amy kind of was like she doesn't freak out but she's like doesn't want to go because Cassidy's going to be there. And we find out that she's been quite jealous of Cassidy this whole time. Mm-hmm. And Sarah's like, you know, there's nothing to worry about. You know, it's We're all just me. friends. Yeah, it's all me and you. It's just, you know, she's a friend. And so Amy being Amy is like, okay, and goes to the party. But of course, Sutter loses <laughs> track of her. What's hilarious is he doesn't want her to be a pushover. But with him, she's such a pushover. I know. And he wants her to be. And uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes. And so they get to the party and Sutter loses track of Amy <laughs> because it's the party. And there's like, it's, there's a pool that's off limits. But one of his friends is like, all it takes is one person to jump in. And of course this gets said right as he's like, maybe I should go find Amy. And then someone says this to him and he's like, damn yes. straight. You're right. So he <laughs> I'm jumped. that one person. <laughs> yes, he jumps in and everybody jumps in and, then Cassidy comes out and she's like, you need to get inside. Amy needs you. And he's like, nah, you know, she's fine. She's like, you need to get inside. She threw up everywhere. She's not okay. And uh, he's like, bring her here. <laughs> she just needs to swim in the pool. She'll swim with me. Yeah. She's like, she'll sink like a rock. Get out. And um, <laughs> then Amy comes out. And is pissed. Cassidy's talking to Sutter and full and freaking well, smacks her in the it's, face. It's because she comes out and hears the, because they're talking and somehow he said like, this isn't a me and you thing. This is a you and her thing or something like that. Oh yeah. And so she just hears the Sutter and Cassidy part and she's like, there is no you and Sutter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Very drunkenly. Very drunk. <laughs> And then she falls and breaks this like two hundred dollar table, and the host of the party, which is I think Cassidy's best friend, yeah, uh, tells them they need to get out because she came and broke her table, got everyone in the pool when they weren't supposed to, like freaking super drunk, and mm-hmm. get out. And Cassidy like sweetly is like, "Sutter, you need to take her home. She needs to go home and be taken care of. Like, do the right thing." None of that happens in the movie. You no, know, I was actually quite sad about that. Do you want to see Amy slap Cassidy? I, I know. I was like trying to imagine in my head how the movie was going to do it if yeah. they were going to make Cassidy like yeah the winch and like get pissed and fight her back. Mm-hmm. Oh so yeah. So when it wasn't, it didn't happen at all. I was like, well, all right, that's how they do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the kids are at school. Make fun, Amy. No, I think because the movie, uh, while they don't downplay the alcoholism, they do it in such a way that it's not obvious. Yeah. And so if they had this party, it would have had to have been obvious. That's true. That makes sense. Because mm-hmm. Amy, man, she could not hold her liquor in this one. Nope. Because then she ended up puking again. Yeah, that's right. She did. So uh, the kid- Before she could get out of there. Yeah. She was puking in the bushes. Yeah, poor girl. So call it, kids called her Pukarina or something like that. Pukarina. <laughs> and, uh, but she's trying not to pay attention to it. Sutter is like, don't worry about it. And she's like, you're right, because we're going to be at St. Louis together soon. And she's like, <laughs> planning St. Louis. And, um, 
she reminds him about finding his dad and he's like yeah i'm gonna ask holly about it and they'll be easier than asking my mom and but he couldn't today because he had to go into work early and it turns out he's being laid off because it's her- a mom and pop shop that no one's shopping at ah, it's super slow and he's like i really want to keep you on sutter because i only can keep one front person on and for every- some reason i really thought that when this happens that it was but i'm the other person <laughs> so oh. i was waiting for that and then he didn't say that and i was like oh okay there's apparently two people that work there yes <laughs> and so he's like i want to you're like the customers love you you know i love you you're great but you have to promise me you won't come to work drunk or buzzed ever again he's like yeah i can't make you that promise so <laughs> he's like Ugh. it's the first time he actually like was honest though. i know and i was his like boss good is job like, tutter he said, thank you for your honesty. And unfortunately, you know, here's our two weeks, but we have two more weeks together. Yeah. So that happens. <laughs> okay. So Ricky Sutter and Marcus do. Nope. That's supposed to be Cassidy. Ricky Cassidy and Marcus do <laughs> an intervention about yeah. Amy. To Sutter. To Sutter. And uh, they tell him that he's changing her. She's like freaking being made fun of she used to be the quiet good girl and now she's getting drunk at parties and all this sort of stuff and cassidy decides to talk to him one-on-one and cassidy tells him that she loves him and she's not gonna break up with you and so like no one ever loves me and cassidy's hurt she's like i loved you and so uh doesn't believe it doesn't believe it and he's like we're moving to st louis because he can't tell him the truth about her being raped it's not her his mm-hmm story to tell so he can't just he can't be like i can't break up with her because this happened so he's like but also this is what we're doing the fact that this is his thought process on why he can't break up with her i'm like dude right come on do you care about her or no if you don't you need to go yep oh i don't think that happened no that does not happen in the movie no nope. so now Sutter goes to holly's and because sh- oh sorry <laughs> you're fine i always do that i'm <laughs> like yep i'm done i have nothing to say and then something clicks i'm like oh i should say this uh because the movie again plays into the this is one of the scenes in the book where it's almost obvious that sutter doesn't totally have feelings for amy Mm -hmm. like he cares about her but not enough to be in a good relationship with her but in the movie they're playing that this could actually be a relationship that changes him for the better Uh if he lets it yeah or he's gonna sink her with him yep so Sutter goes to Holly's and they chat for a bit like good siblings and they're making memories of dad and all this sort of stuff. Making and memories? Sharing memories. <laughs> <laughs> and he asks, uh, can you please ask mom where dad is? And she's like, I don't have to. I know where he is. He's in Texas and gives him all the information. And that happens. Yeah. Yep. yep. And it happens in the movie. And Amy and Sutter drive down to Texas. Unfortunately, the date that worked out for his dad was during graduation. So they missed graduation. <laughs> no he purposely did that because he wasn't going to graduate he knew that he wasn't going to graduate and he didn't want to be there for that and amy was okay missing graduation so got it (sighs) come on Mm -hmm. and so when they get there his dad doesn't even recognize him Mm. he forgot he was coming this weekend and he's like come on you know come on i i I'm late for a date. Yes. <laughs> but you can come. With. So they go to this double date and they go dancing and drinking. And he's like a very friendly, happy guy. Like oh, I was going to say drunk. <laughs> he's very drunk. Yes. And um, they're sharing all the stories. And they're having a decent time. And Amy's like, what have you been up to this whole time? And he shares about his adventures and key West key Springs, Palm Springs somewhere. <laughs> Key West. There you go. And uh, he was just happy they weren't hung up on why why he left Oklahoma. But his girlfriend was. She's like, what? You know, why did you? Or no. And then someone said, uh, somehow it got brought up. Sutter said that his mom blames him and says he cheated on her. And that's what hooked the girlfriend. It's like, well. Did you? And like all this sort of stuff. And we find out that he cheated on her with very multiple women. Like he didn't keep track of. And the date freaks out because she was going to leave her family for him. And what happens is the girlfriend asks what happened between you and your wife. And he said the old story. Irre- irre- 
why can't I say this? I can say this any other time, but when I'm going to record it, I can't. Irreconcilable differences. Thing yeah. was, she always wanted a future, and I just didn't have one to give her. And when I, every time I read this book, when I read that, I'm like, oh, this is going to be Sutter's wake up call. Is yeah. it? No. Nope. And so date freaks out. They were kicked out of the bar because she starts freaking breaking things. <laughs> and Sutter, or and he, his dad's like, Sutter, can you k- cover the bill? Or he puts a 20 on the table. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, cover. Cover the, the rest of it. Yeah. As they've been drinking so many pitchers of beer, yeah. eating so much wings. Yeah. And then he's like, I'll be back to the house in a half an hour. But they're like, yeah, we can go with you and all this. No, no, I'll be at the back in a half hour. So this happens in the movie? The girlfriend wasn't. I was going to say, table. yep. Girlfriend isn't at the table with them. And like, it's not like obvious that she's girlfriend. She's a girl that's interested in him and he's interested in her, but it's not a girlfriend. In the movie, they do a good job at making a divide between Sutter and his dad kind of early on because Sutter like goes to the jukebox and picks out music that he knows his dad likes or he thinks his dad like. And like they sit down at the table and he's like look dad like this song and dad's like nah this was more your mom's thing yeah than mine and so i was like oh oh another difference is that sutter is the one that asks what happened because well girlfriend is at the table so girlfriend can't be the one to start that conversation and in the movie too, Sutter's mom didn't kick the dad out. He just left, which again is kind of the line for Sutter where he's like, Oh, I don't like my dad. Yeah. I do like this scene. It's a really sad scene to like, but it's like, it just kind of like m- makes everything way down on you when his dad is like, can you cover the tab for me as he's leaving to go take care of the girl? Yeah. But also, why is he taking care of a girl who just wasn't sitting at the table? With I know. And she freaked out that he had a son and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he has them cover it and he pulls out his wallet and he doesn't have enough money. So then he's like, uh, Amy, do you? And she's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I've got this. And she pulls out her mic. Her mic. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, her money. <laughs> Holly's mic was slipping. <laughs> So, yeah, I just like that scene between them because, again, Miles and Shailene have great (laughs) chemistry. I love them together so much. There were a few. It said multiple times in my fun facts that they improvised, but this specific scene Mm -hmm. was a big improv. Oh, improvised? Yeah, they improvised this scene. They do so good. And they, like, they really look like a couple, like... Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. that was, like, struggling with. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, that and, like, they just seemed so comfortable. Like, in the book, I don't feel like, obviously, they're a couple, but he doesn't notice, like, the, like, oh, she's got her arms around me or she's leaning her head on my shoulder or whatever. And in the movie, you see it and you see that they're comfortable with each other. And, like, she goes to the jukebox with him and is helping him pick out the song and stuff. And, like, it was cute. Yeah. Yep. So back to the book. The half hour turns into an hour and a half, and Sutter's like, we need to just go. It's time to leave. And so they are. Oh, that was a difference, too. In the movie, Sutter's dad tells them to give him an hour, not a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's kind of. Okay. It's a long time. Wait for me for an hour. I would be like, mm, no, dad. Yeah, and he's like, we came to see you. Yeah, that yeah. was so sad. Yeah. yeah. He was like, we can come with. He's like, no, you just stay. I'll be back. Go meet up at my apartment. I'll wait for me for an hour. And he's like, but we're, we're here for you. Yeah, it was sad. I just wanted to give Miles a hug. Okay, so Amy's trying to make him feel better on the way home, but he's not having it. He's like, Amy, like this, the apple doesn't fall far from the far from the tree. Like I'm gonna end up like this, and mm-hmm. you don't deserve this, and all this sort of stuff. And she's saying how she loves him, and uh, he's like, "No, you don't. You're just happy someone came along who actually noticed you." Type of thing. And it's like it was kind of like a low blow. And mm-hmm. she's like, ah. and he's so wasted, he's swerving all over the road. He almost hits a semi truck, 
and they end up hydroplaning like off the road a bit and well you're missing too this was one of the scenes where she actually stood up to him and was like you do not get to screw this up just because you're hurting right now like you can't be upset at me yeah and then um then they hydroplane hydroplane and she's like Amy starts apologizing, saying, are you okay? And he's like, what is wrong with you? Like, I almost just killed you. Clearly, I'm not good for you. And uh, he gets out of the car, and Amy gets out to follow him, and she gets hit by a car. Like, ugh. (laughs) It's poor girl. (laughs) And luckily, it just clipped her, like, the window clipped her arm. The window? The The mirror. mirror. Yeah, I was like, yeah, the window right there. (laughs) Sutter's like, I got to take you to the hospital. She's like, no, you know, if you take us, you know, they're going to call your parents or the police or something because we're drunk, like, and you're driving. No, 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 no. We got to go to St. Louis. Yes. Can't mess anything up. I'll make up a story tomorrow. Like, just let's go home. So in the movie, after they wait for an hour (laughs) for dad they go back to the bar and they find dad in the bar hanging out with buddies. And I kind of like that. I like Mm -hmm. seeing that dad is a disappointment rather than just assuming that dad's a disappointment. Yeah. So then the car thing happens, but instead of Sutter getting out of the car to walk away because he's upset he makes amy get out of the car yeah i thought that was so dumb he's yelling at her to get out of the car i'm like no you're supposed to get out oh i'm so mad at that i know i thought it was so weird but i was like (laughs) he's just gonna drop her off freaking three hours away from home and like she just has to get back home because he's not good enough he's not good for her yeah i'm like yeah "Yeah, there's your proof right there that's why (laughs) gosh and then (laughs) seen the first time i saw this movie i was like what the fuck because <laughs> i was not expecting her to get hit by a car because she's sitting there and she's like sorry i'm sorry i don't know what to do i love you sorry. and then she gets hit and she and like, just like she flies <laughs> yeah because you're like looking out of the passenger side door mm-hmm. and so the car comes and knocks her yeah it was insane yeah so now anytime anytime i see a movie with a car i mean mean girls <laughs> screwed that up for me too with the yeah. bus but now i'm even more terrified i'm like you're gonna get hit you're gonna get hit <laughs> oh my gosh. the other big difference here is they go to the hospital uh-huh. rather than not and they also did not go the weekend of graduation because graduation yep. happens yep yeah, and so Sutter's mom comes and picks him up, and they drive home, and mm-hmm. she's like, I'll tell you where your dad is. Wait, no, that's later. No, that's way later. That's later. But that's it, the end of the movie. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. yep. <laughs> uh, okay. So Sutter's talking to Ricky and letting him know he's cutting back drinking, and Ricky doesn't believe him that it's going to happen, but Sutter didn't tell him that he has not had a drink since the accident. Mm-hmm. And Amy's mom and mom's boyfriend love him now because she made it out that Sutter saved her life and all this sort of stuff and um which kind of pissed me off like I get why she did it but I was also like girl I mean yeah I definitely it makes sense why she did it it's Mm -hmm. her boyfriend yeah but it's just she's just he's not good for her and it's sad yeah but she loves him so much that she doesn't see me yep and I've so been there. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sutter takes Amy to Marvin's and he's trying to find a way to break up with her. But Amy is just so excited about St. Louis. And so Sutter drops the bomb that he can't leave this summer because he has to do summer school to graduate. And Amy's just like trying to figure this out. And she's trying to change plans. Be like, OK, well, I'll go at the end of summer, too. He's like, no, it makes sense. Your sister already has the job and the house and everything like that. Go now. And then you can start get looking around and getting things like the feel of everything and prepare me for when I come down. And she's like, that's perfect. That's perfect. And they go and uh, he kisses her goodbye. And 
He's trying to do a little more, but she's, you know, has her arm in a cast. And he, she, he was also kind of excited because he was like, wow, this will be the first time I have sex with her sober. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and uh, she's like, no, it's, you know, my mom can, might come out and all this sort of stuff. So he just like held her and he didn't really want to let her go, but he did. And he plans on shooting her an email when she's been down there for a month saying, yeah, I can't come. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> come on, Sutter. <laughs> So, in the movie, graduation happens. I put a note here, and I don't remember when he says this, but I think it's funny. Sutter says, I don't see what's... Oh, wait, it's because he's talking to Aster about not being able to graduate. Nope. Because he graduates in the movie. I can't remember. I think he's talking to Aster, but I can't remember why he's talking to Aster. But he basically says, I don't see what's great being an adult. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I put, dude, nothing. You're right. (laughs) But then he goes, well, are you happy? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So funny. So then they don't miss graduation. And Amy goes to give him a drink from her flask and he turns her down. Mm -hmm. But she takes a drink. (laughs) Yep. And then she asks... I, his family is not there and he's like I told him it's next week mm-hmm. because he didn't want them there yeah I'm so <laughs> sad so she goes to her oh no she goes to Crystal because Crystal waves at her and so she goes to Crystal because they're still friends mm-hmm. and this is when Sutter sees Cassidy and they kind of do an awkward goodbye she isn't going to New Mexico like she does in the book. She is going to California with Marcus. Mm. And then basically the next scene is Amy in the bus station getting ready to go to Philly. (laughs) And Sutter doesn't actually like say goodbye or anything to her. He just kind of drives by. He ghosts her. Yeah, he ghosts her. Which is really sad. sad. Yeah. So after they say their goodbyes in the book, Sutter calls Cassidy to kind of talk about what happened. And this is when he finds out there she's moving to New Mexico with Marcus and going to school there. And then he ends up going to a bar and drinking with all the bar drunks and uh, walking down the street and just yelling out goodbye to everybody. And in his brain, he's saying goodbye to his family. He's saying goodbye to his friends. He's saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah. So when I read this book, I always think that he dies. <laughs> yeah, I think he went and killed himself. It was so sad. Yeah, yeah. It makes me very sad because I like Sutter and I don't want him to go and die. Yeah. But we don't know he did. Yeah. But that's it's just how it felt. Exactly. You might read it and go, guys, no, you're dumb. He's just blitzed off his ass. <laughs> This is not how the movie ends. In the movie, after he ghosts Amy and drives by, he gets drunk. But then he goes to park at home and he runs over his mailbox. That's right. (laughs) It makes me laugh so hard and his mom comes out. We just talked about this. (laughs) (laughs) And... They get into a big fight and she's like, fine, I'll let you see your dad. And he's like, mom, no, I already saw my dad. And he's like, that's why you don't love me because I'm basically like my dad. And she's like, oh my God, no, not at all. What? And then they have a really special moment. So we get more closure is what I said. And then it's actually really sad because at the start of the movie, when he's writing to the Dean of Admissions, he's talking about his biggest hardship being the breakup with Cassidy. But now he deletes all that and Which also then the end of this definitely makes me think that in the book he does die because of just how. Anyways. Okay. (laughs) Because now he deletes it all and then he goes, my biggest hardship is me Mm -hmm. and starts talking about that. And then it cuts to black. So then you think that it's just going to end right there. But then it comes back and there's Sutter driving and he's got a purple coat in his hand and we know purple. So the first party that they went to in the book 
Amy went to the party looking like a grape because she was wearing a big purple coat. So I really do love that they had her have a purple coat in the mm-hmm. movie and she had taken it to the first party in the movie and so assumed that it got left at his house or something because he's carrying the purple coat upstairs of a college and out comes Amy and they just look at each other and kind of like smile. And then the movie ends. Yep. Ah. A bonus fun fact for y'all. So Miles Teller and Shaylee. You got this. Shailene, right? Yeah. Okay. Woodley disagree on what happened between their two characters at the end. Mm. So Teller (laughs) believes that the two went to lunch, but that the two would not reconcile because Amy's grown up and grown stronger and so she's moved on. But Shailene agreed that they went to lunch, but she thinks because they're young and immature, they would reconcile their romance, even though it would not be a healthy romance. Mm-hmm. Oh. I I agree with Shailene, but I, I don't I think it would be healthy this time around. I think they would both grown and know what's wrong and like Sutter at least what I would like to believe is Sutter has finally like accepted what was wrong with him and accepted everything and now can move past it and isn't stuck in it. And Amy has now been on her own for so long that she's now an independent woman. So they can get together and be together. Aww. That's what I think. But their smile definitely is kind of more towards Miles idea. I feel like because Amy kind of like smiles at him and then looks away and kind of shakes her head, but then looks back. Yeah. But I want it to be Shailene's way. (laughs) Cause I love Dan. You guys, we did it. Yes. Wahoo. (laughs) All done. (laughs) All right. So IMDb cast 43 people for this movie. Yeah. That seems about right. Okay. Miles Teller played Sutter. Freaking love him. He's the perfect Sutter. (gasps) Oh, (laughs) <laughs> you're recasting him okay let me explain first i love miles teller okay i think he did great he did fantastic he did a wonderful job and i really wasn't gonna recast him but he didn't have the look i wanted <laughs> i did not picture uh sutter looking like that i definitely pictured him more of a country boy which is probably because i had a country boy reading it but also it's in oklahoma and I did, I don't know. I haven't officially decided if I wanted to recast or just this is who I had in mind instead. But I think I'm going to recast. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Okay, but I loved Sutter. It was a very hard decision. <sighs> okay. I chose. <laughs> this is what happens when you see the movie first. It is. <laughs> see? Where, where's my notes? Here we go. I chose, if it'll go back. You probably won't know him. His name is Lucas Till. Oh, that sounds really familiar. He was the boy in the Hannah Montana movies. <laughs> not that is not Sutter movie. Not the no the not not like the blonde in the movie. Yeah. Not the not the main. Not mm. what are their names? Not her brother or anything. No. Like that. No, no. Like the just yeah. the one in the no. movie. That's how I pictured him. Total country boy. No. Like that. <laughs> I do not approve. Well, sorry. <laughs> it's my recast. <laughs> Again, I love Miles Teller, and I think he did a great job. He just wasn't the right look. He's got the perfect, like, he's so good at the, like, nonchalance party boy, though. Yeah, I think he could have done a little better. <laughs> well, not, he could have done a little better about the sarcasticness. Like when uh, Crystal comes over and is like, you have to get to French class. Like she's obviously not approving of him. I loved mm-hmm. how in the book he stood up and was like held out his hand oh. to like, oh hello, like <laughs> being a little sarcastic, a little punk. And he didn't yeah. do stuff like that. But I mean that's director, yeah, guided things. Well, but it also if they improv most of their scenes, well he should have read the book in advance and then he would have known. How do you know if he did or not? Well, if he didn't, then what was going on and what? Why? <laughs> oh my. He's my sutter. Okay, well, that's because you saw the movie first. (laughs) This is why I made her read the book first. Exactly. You'll get the true differences. 
I didn't expect them to piss me off. <laughs> you think I'm calling Miles bad? I'm not. I really like him. But you recast him. Just because it didn't match the book to me. Okay. You're reading the book matching the movie. I'm doing the opposite now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Shailene Wood. Woodle. Woodle? Woodley. 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 She played Amy. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her a lot. Yeah. She was mm-hmm. fine. She was perfect. Mm-hmm. I feel like she did a bunch of stuff and now she's gone. Mm-hmm. She's not doing much anymore. Mm hmm. Mom and I first started watching her. Secret Life of... Mm-hmm. Yep, I used to watch that too, but yeah. then it got too much. I got very... Like, everyone was getting pregnant. Yeah, I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's really how a teenage life is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think what the problem was, was the show's, like, success was because Shailene was pregnant and she was dealing with that. But then she had the kid and then she was, like, getting her life on track. So then they were like, what we else could we throw? Yeah. yeah. So then it was... We're going to make her get pregnant. Oh, we're going to make her get pregnant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus, I also didn't like, like, yeah, she should end up with the baby daddy. But baby daddy was such a bad, like, I didn't like him. Yeah. I, I wanted her with Ben. And I was like. Yes. He would have been the perfect role model for the kids. So I didn't like when the show diverged from that, too. Because I was like, you could show her getting in a relationship with someone else. And like. Yeah having a good relationship and baby daddy still being in the picture. Yes. Not, oh, I'm going to go be with him. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about (laughs) something totally different. (laughs) But no, she's fine. Yeah. No, she basically, after Divergent dropped, she's big into, uh, what is it called? Social justice issues and doing Uh, things like that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Brie Larson is Cassidy. Like I just said, I'm not a big fan of her, but she's fine i didn't recast her i liked her yeah deo okany deo okany is marcus He's he looked very familiar i just realized once you said his name i was like i know exactly who he is did i say it right? he's either in hunger games or divergent did i say it right okany i have no idea it's i y i at the end oh can me i don't know <laughs> He's in Bones. Don't you watch Bones? I do. He's in only one episode. Oh, he's in The Hunger Games. He's Thresh. Yep, I thought mm-hmm. so. I thought he looked familiar. Wow, Kay. he was in Bones? Just one episode. Yeah, but I wouldn't know who he is. Unless he was like a side character. Or unless he died. Probably died. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> I know all the side characters. I've watched that show like six times. Okay. <laughs> <Just> start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Kyle Chandler is Tommy, who is Sutter's dad. He's good. I think so. Yeah. I He played such a good, like, not all there person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I liked him. I just wish he did more of, like... The, the friendly. Book. Yes. Yeah. He seemed mm-hmm. a lot more friendly and happy. And He seemed very, like, in the book, he did real good at pretending like he was happy to have his kid there. And in, then... In the movie, yeah, he was, like... Mm-hmm. It was almost like a bother. Mm-hmm. So Jennifer Jason Lee, mm-hmm. who played Sarah Sutter's mom, mm-hmm. I liked her a lot. I did too. I think she played the perfect like single mom. Yeah, it was very on her luck. different than the book because her character was very different. Uh-huh. But it was perfect for the movie. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Like if they had followed the book, I wouldn't think she was good. But for what they did, mm-hmm. I like what they did in the movie. Mm-hmm. Andre. Roy, Roo, Royo, 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 R O Y O, Royo, Royo, <laughs> Royo, <laughs> Mr. Astor. Oh, he was. I love him. I thought he was yeah, really good. He was good. I don't know what I was expecting, but he did mm-hmm. really good. I liked how like sarcastic he was. <laughs> yes, I liked when he's like, "Yes, we're gonna do homework together." <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, what's that? You know what that probably means? That probably means that. Not only did Miles and Shailene do most of that. Probably. The whole if movie probably was. I was going to say. Let's not knock the writers, though. But yes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. if Miles had to do improv, unless they wrote everyone else's line. <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> that would be annoying. That would suck. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. He's pretty famous, too. I should know this. Bob Odenkirk. Oh, yeah. Odenkirk. Is that who played Dan? Yeah. His setter's boss. Yeah. 
First off, his name is supposed to be Bob. <laughs> exactly. His real name. Yeah. Is, maybe that's why they changed it. <laughs> that's probably exactly why. <laughs> that's hilarious. I always, I was wondering that when I watched. I was like, hmm, it's such a weird change. I know. It's like basically why? exactly how he's right. I love him just because I know him as Saul in Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, that's where I've seen him from. He's from something yeah. else too. Better Call Saul. The spin-off Breaking Bad. Yeah, no, I know, but he's like in a. Um, he's in a lot. He's like in a lot of he's comedy stuff and stuff. Super right? famous. Yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah, he I did good. He good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary Elizabeth Winstre- Winstead oh. played, played Holly. Holly. She looks just like Brie Larson. I really thought oh. they like were like sisters. They look so similar to me. She's in. Um, God, and now I'm not going to be able to remember it. She's in the movie that came out when we were in like middle school or high school. And Kristen Stewart's ex boyfriend starred in it and it has Kurt Russell as his dad, who's a superhero. And she plays the girl who like falls in love with him but is really the bad Sky High? Uh huh. Yeah. That? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. So I always think of that. I think she's also in Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I think she is too. Um, but I love her in everything she's in. But I always go back to Sky High. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Caitlin Denver played Crystal. I love her. She's in a lot, too. I love her. She's in, uh, what's it called? Last Man Standing. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's so mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, I thought she did yeah. good. Yeah. When the audiobook reader read Crystal's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, like, had her made, he made her have, like, a really bad lisp and, like... <laughs> It just made her sound like someone you would just be so annoyed annoyed with. (laughs) It was so funny. So when she comes on, I'm like, of course she's going to be like a normal girl. But it was like, (laughs) I was trying to wrap my head. That's not you. Yes. It was so funny. (laughs) That's hilarious. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. So is the theme. Oh, well, that's it. Those are all the characters that we're going to talk about. Perfect. (laughs) Okay. So is the theme of the book and the movie the same? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, they changed it slightly because I think if you watched a movie about a teenage alcoholic, it would be very depressing. Yes, yeah, Can't which is that. which is fine. Yeah, do the characters stay true to how they're written? I think so. I don't think the mom does, but again, oh duh, yeah, the mom, the parents don't, the parents don't no. at all. No, no, because they both don't even have a significant other in their. Life. I know. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Oh, no, you're, you're fine. fine. Don't you're worry fine. About Go it. ahead. <laughs> Thank you. And I think I think that this was more of a her not being in it as much, but mm-hmm. Cassidy seemed a lot nicer. Like she seemed to have Amy her interest at heart more in the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wish I wish that they actually showed that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me Which too. They didn't in the no. movie. No. So. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, I think they all stayed pretty true. Yeah, I do too. Mm-hmm. And which did you prefer, the book or the movie? <laughs> I'm interested. I prefer the movie. Yeah, I figured you would. <laughs> you prefer the book. I <laughs> do. Our theory stands. <laughs> That's hilarious. Really? Yeah. I really thought you weren't going to like it because of the, the theme of it. <laughs> No, I really liked how it was written. Yeah. And I mean, I, it's written wonderfully. I just love, I've never had a, it feel like a, someone was telling me a story. Even with the end being like really depressing? Yeah, because. Because real life. Real life. So I don't know. I just am like. That's fun. I thought you were going to choose movie because of the happy ending. No, I really didn't like how Miles treated her at the end of the book. I like that you say Miles Sutter. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yes, Sutter. But the book also is open ended too, where you, I mean yeah. you don't really know. Like he says well, in a month he's gonna send the email. But does he? That's so, so sad. It is. It's horrible. But that's why I like the because I love Sutter and I don't want him to go that way. I know. <laughs> but I mean the book was just more real. Real. Yeah. It was sad. I enjoyed how it was written. Well, I think that was my main thing is how it was written because I've never read a book that was fun like that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's a story being told, not being read a book or like yeah, reading a book. Yeah. So, yeah, I choose book. Well, 
that if you choose a movie. I do. And why? Oh, you, you just said. Yeah. Because it's a better ending. Yeah. I like the ending because, yeah, I just, it's funny because this time when I was reading it, I got to the end and I was like, no, he's supposed to go to her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I realized, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's because you're remembering the movie. Yep. Um, But, yeah. And I just, I love Miles. I love love it all yeah yeah i like this movie a lot man this our theory holds up it does <laughs> okay keeping track i'm really surprised i i really really especially like Allie halfway through this book te- or no right when she started and when i started i texted her and was like this book's about a teenage alcoholic i'm sorry <laughs> and she was like yep <laughs> yeah, that's all i said yep <laughs> good choice <Bri. laughs> And the movie does so much better at hiding it. I was like, oh, Allie's going to like the movie. (laughs) I just really liked how with it, uh, if Sutter was a character in any other book, you'd hate him. Absolutely. Because he's the party animal, the obnoxious one. I think, too, if he wasn't the character you followed, if he was not the main character in this book. Yeah. Then you would hate him. Yeah. But the book wrote him so well mm-hmm. that it's like you love him, oh but gosh. then yes, you also hate him. You almost want to just grab him and shake him and say, "Can you get your life together?" I know <laughs> this poor kid; he's been through so much. I know that's the hardest part. I'm like, that's why you are like you are. Like it makes I sense, know. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's it. Yeah, and then sneak peek. Yeah. We got a mini-sode coming up for you. Mm-hmm. If you catch anything in, it would be last week's. Breaking Dawn? Oh, yeah. That we missed. Part Please two. Let us know and we'll mm-hmm. chat about it in our mini-sode. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and send us an email. Mm-hmm. At offscript253. At gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Oh, and next week we got Perks of Being Wallflower. Yes, we do. Yes. I'm excited for Another that Another yeah. teenage depressing movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. book. Very. Like, I mean, I'm, oh, I already know which one you're going to choose. <laughs> you don't. I don't, but I have a idea. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Could be surprised. I'm only a couple. That's true. Two hours into the book. Yeah, but it doesn't. But my the- yeah. if the theory stands true. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty positive it's going to. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come stay right. tuned. Yeah. I guess the other thing that we should say is, guys, if you have the chance to shop local. Oh, yeah. You should shop local. Yes. I realize since we're recording at Bookham, we should, we should say, say something that. like that. Yeah. Mom and pop shops are my favorite. Yeah, they're the best because they're homey and just sweet. I love it. I know. Yeah. They're so nice. Mm-hmm better than corporations Uh uh-huh yeah they have you can tell that there's their own little personal touch on it Mm -hmm. so agree yeah yes shop local guys yes so thank you bookum for letting us record Mm -hmm. our minisode and our episode here yeah and yeah all right we will talk to you guys next time Mm -hmm. Bye. bye thanks for sticking with us we hope you enjoyed it If you did, we would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed, rate, and reviewed. You can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shoutouts to Madam Ashen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See See you next time. time!